Well, once again, I think we're in for a lot of fun here at the SCG. Obviously, the atmosphere is going to be great because uh, the place is going to be packed. And, uh, of course, the facilities here are superb. The outfield is as fast as it's ever been. And uh, I suspect the team winning the toss will want to bat first. Although the last time Australia batted first on this pitch, they actually struggled to get to, uh, what, 220-odd. And they were a little bit surprised. This one looks a little bit harder. Uh, you can see there's a, a lot of little cracks in there, but the grounds would have had plenty of time to really see to it that the ball will come onto the bat. Hopefully that's the case. Win the toss and make somewhere near 300. Yes, uh, looks a pretty good surface. Although a touch dry, should be able to take some spin. Won't matter that, uh, that it's dry. I was just a bit worried that uh, some of that storm water might have got under, but the covers are very good here and the drainage is good. So I, I think it'll play OK. Well, it could be an advantage to the side that bats first. And let's find out who will be batting first. Here's Ian Chappell with the captains for the toss. Uh, Clive, you're ready to go? Ready. Okay, do. Uh, same point. Yep. Heads. Heads it is. Yep. We'll have a bat. Looks, uh, once again, a very good pitch. A good one to bat first on, I think. Yes, it is. Uh, it's a good one to bat. Uh, I hope I don't run out, of, run out of my luck with the tosses of the important games. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the self-belief in the team looks to be very high at the moment. Yes, we're playing good cricket. Uh, as I said before, I came to Australia that uh, playing well against Australia will be, is what we are looking for. It, it's going to be a real appraisal of how good we are. Yeah. Uh, so far, we've done well and, and I hope we carry on. And the injury report, uh, what's happened there? Uh, there are quite a few. Sachin's <laughs> out, uh, Sehwag's out, Kumble is out. Yeah. Uh, uh, since the last game against Zimbabwe, we've got in Ajit in place of Nera and yeah. uh, Karthik in place of Kumble. Yeah. Patif looked pretty good opening the other day. Yeah, he looks all right. He's got he's got a lot of talent. He's young, uh, and uh, and we hope he does well. Okay. Good luck then. Thanks, Ian. Ricky. Uh, always a bit tougher batting second here in Sydney. Oh, generally, yeah. yeah. Uh, it gets a bit dark, and the ball tends to be about the same colour as the wicket here in Sydney. But uh, we've done it before and chased big titles down here before. Mm. And hopefully, we don't have to chase a two big one today. Right. I guess it's an ongoing psychological battle between you and India, trying to get the upper hand. It is. It's been that way right through the summer. Mm. Uh, they've played some some great cricket, and we probably haven't been quite at our best yet. But mm. uh, I don't think it's far away. Yeah. Talking to Brett Lee, he sounds very positive at the moment. He is, yeah, he always is. He, he loves playing and loves getting out there and doing his best uh, whenever he can. And, uh, you know, he's, I'm, I'm looking forward to him bowling today. He worked extremely hard in the nets the other day. And we've, uh, I've had a bit of a chat to him over the last couple of days, and he's very positive and looking forward to today. All right, good luck then. Thanks, man. Saurav Ganguly has won the toss, and a big smile came to his face as he said, we'll bat. Happy Indian captain and uh, Ricky Ponting. Well, he won't have to wait long to see Brett Lee in action. No, he'll be in there very, very quickly. That's the Australia side. Adam Gilchrist, who is going to be rested after this game. He's going to take two games off and Brad Haddon's coming in. That's been announced by the selectors today. Simon Cuttage, Ricky Ponting, Damien Martin, due for score. Andrew Simons, Michael Clark. Now, Michael Bevan also is uh, just starting to run back into form. Ian Harvey, Andy Bickle, Brett Lee will be given the new ball, they insist, and uh, Jason Gillespie, Brad Hogg is the 12th man. Well, uh, some good fortune for the Indians already winning the toss, electing to bat, albeit with uh, a number of their known players not in the team. Yeah, uh, Tendulkar's out again, so it's going to be part of Patel and Saurav Ganguly to open the innings, then Laxman, Dravid, Gavaskar, Yuvraj uh, Singh, who I think is a very good player, then Badani Gurkha. Patan, left arm swing bowler, and he can hit a bit. And then Murali Kartik gets a game. I'm so pleased about that because uh, he's almost the perpetual 12th man. Yes, well, a lot of expectation here from the Sydney Cricket Ground. Yes, uh, welcome to our international viewers. And we're in for plenty of entertainment this evening. Australia taking on India. It's been a real arm wrestle right throughout the summer here in Australia. That's um, the latest match between these two sides. The Australians falling short, all out for 284 after 49.4 overs. And Vivius Laxman, uh, 103. All his one day international hundreds have been made against Australia, so he is a headache. And they would like to remove him early on if they can today. That particular match. Uh, that target was gettable. You had to make 304, which sounds a massive target, and is. But uh, when you think of the way the game went, the fact that they lost their wickets at crucial times, whereas India went right through, only four down, that made all the difference. Sir Ganguly won the toss, elected to bat. 
and he'll be uh, more than happy getting first use of this Sydney Cricket Ground pitch. Plenty of support here. A sellout at the Sydney Cricket Ground today. We'll be live right around Australia all day. Great support for these two sides. The SCG will be packed to the rafters. Time now to go to our commentary position and to start proceedings of game seven of this VB series. Bill Laurie and with him, Ian Healy. Thank you, Simon O'Donnell, and good afternoon to all our viewers right around the world. India have won the toss, they've elected to bat. There should be plenty of swing here this afternoon for the Australian fast bowlers, Westby, Lee and Bickle. There's Ganguly and Patel here to get a score around about 260, which would be a great score here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. And good afternoon, Ian Healy. Good afternoon, Bill. Hi, everyone. This wicket resembles something the Indians are most comfortable on at home. Little jigsaw pieces held firmly together, probably will slow up a little bit as the night wears on. Party Patel comes to open his 11th match with his captain, Sir of Ganguly. Statistics belie his ability with that bat. And Jason Gillespie, probably the last thing he really needs to do today with the tragedy of David Hooks is to bowl. But here he is in the middle of the SCG looking to create some damage in this Indian top order. Daryl Harper and Steve Bucknor, the umpires. Ian Harvey at first slip for the Australians today. It's a new uh, first slipper. Ponting at second. And Gooley on strike. It's a sellout. We're going all day live into Sydney Town. It should be a great contest. Looks to be a very good pitch. The outfield should be quick. Gillespie. Now, quite often on these flat Sydney pitches, the new ball will do something. There's a little bit of moisture that has to be underneath the surface to hold the little jigsaw pieces together. So it's now Gillespie and Brett Lee has to have to use that. Use the hardness of the seam to nip something away from the left-handers into the pads of the left-hander, who knows? But it doesn't last long. But there is a little give in the surface in the first stages of a Sydney one day off. India have never won a one-day international on the Sydney cricket ground but against Australia. But their form at the moment, you certainly wouldn't write them off today. They're taking the challenge right up to this Australian side in the VB series. Their batting has been sensational. Saywag and Tunduk are out the lineup today, but still plenty of depth. Yeah, they've made a habit of enjoying turning those statistical records around this summer. Ganguly, the instigator of that. That man, Damien Martin, under a little pressure. At this stage, it's only public pressure. Not coming from the selectors. He's had a good chat to his captain, to the selectors. Even this morning, he was on the balcony talking to Alan Border, so he knows exactly where he stands with them. 47 not out from 39 balls, just two games ago. I thought it was a good opportunity in this match for Australia to use him as an opener, but it appears Kadic has got that job. Well, well bowled. 139 k's, quite sharp, good carry through to Gilchrist. Ganguly flashing outside off stump. Looking for the in swing of the way he's holding the seam. Slides it across the flashing blade of Ganguly. Just a little bit fuller, and you might get the outside edge. But if you stay with that line for too long and that length for too long, Ganguly has taxed them before. Into the right or the front armpit is the go fairly often. And this field. And Gilby off the mark. Well, they've been dropping catches in the test matches and one day internationals and the young guy who's a brilliant fieldsman in the first over charges and misses. Right. 
It's none for one. A happy crowd, it's a full house. Two informed teams, and it's going to be Brett Lee now. I don't know about Martin, but this guy's under the hammer now, Haley. He certainly is. Once again, it's still only public pressure. The selectors have opted to use him again today, and I'm pleased with that. He didn't enter the rotation policy that they can employ. Ricky Ponting, extra encouragement at the top of his mark. 83 from his overs the other night, the highest ever in Australia. One for 83. He's bounced back once this summer after the Sydney test. He had a good one day in Hobart. Then he's had a poor one, so he's due for a good one. And he gets a new ball, which is important. But unfortunately for him, he's bowling to two left-handers. So he won't be swinging it away from the right-handed batsman, which is normal method. He's got to try and get it right to the left-handers. Again, Gooley and Patel. Two slips, a point cover and a mid-off and a third man for Brett Lee. And on the onside, a mid-on, a backward square leg and a deep fine leg. Oh, he's taking some time too about this first one. He is nervous. Good start. Ask the question, Gilchrist. I'm not sure he's looking to put the umpire off for a while, but that took off. That was good pace, about 137 k's and good carry. And not bad line. He's got Ganguly jumping, bending at his ribs. Probably flicked his shirt through to Gilchrist, who's wearing his new orange gloves again today. His transformation from orange to blue in the Melbourne test wasn't too successful. He's gone back to the orange. Hopefully the day will be better. Nicely played and well fielded. The man going from backward square leg almost into a leg gully position after that first delivery. That's Clark. The school of thought that that man could be in catching position, but he's not at the moment. He's there as a run saver or of a particularly big scoop shot going that way. The school of thought says he might come in a little bit at times for the one that Brett Lee gets right in the armpit. Hopefully nothing will fall short of him. And they're banking on Ganguly at least getting it off the middle of the bat. Gone. Yes, he is. He's got him. Brett Lee back in town. The two good deliveries and leg stump and pushed one across him. Gilchrist takes the catch and it's one for two. A lot of joy thanking the captain for the support bad shot where's that come from jumping in the air fending wide Gilchrist takes his 300th one day international dismissal Brett Lee's third ball in a very important spell captures the Indian captain one for one Sell out at the Sydney Cricket Ground. India one for one, second over. And 
the VS Waxman comes to the crease, having a wonderful summer. Man of the match, the Gabba, comes in against the new ball. Brett Lee has broken through. Three slips now for Waxman. Remember in Adelaide, he nicked one just wide of second slip early on. Now there's three slips, a point, a mid-off, and a third man. This crowd's totally involved already, right from the word go today in Sydney. Waxman's got to be the same. Scored 100 in the first TVS game in India just in the month of October or November, whenever it was, and then against Australia, and then another one at the Gabba. His highest scoring one day internationals. So, loves playing the Australians. Here he goes, fourth ball from Lee. Wide ball. I wish the ball will shape away. That one picked up. And Gooley was the one that was off the scene. That was one from to Waxman. was 147 k so that was sharp enough. Watch here, the ball pitches and seems away. Four shot, but what a sharp delivery and well taken by Gilk with 300 catches in one day internationals. A record. Dismissals, in fact. Well caught and a big wicket for Brett Lee. Another wide ball. All he needs now is a no ball. It's one of those overs. How would a no ball wicket go? Like the two he bowled in the test match here in Sydney. That would dishearten a few. But he's getting it to carry through. He's probably just trying a few too many things at the moment. But this was a beauty, seeming to the right of screen. The angle continuing through. And Gilchrist having to really hustle to get to that. Footwork went nowhere because it was flying. And it was very obvious that the team was right behind the efforts of Lee today. They've put a lot of time in on him. Well, you want your fastest bowl of bowling well. That's well run. Waxman off the mark. It's an important cog in the wheel. If McGrath are injured, Brett Lee to he's 148 Ks. He's been 149 Ks in this over already. So he's got pace, he just needs control and a little bit of swing. I thought he tried too much in Brisbane, rather than just firing in at the base of the stumps when he went for 83. And look at it again. In the first over, he's all over the place. Left and right handers that he's got to cope with, but just needs to keep it really simple as he gets this rhythm back. Patel to, to on strike. We could keep a batsman. Only a small man. He's played one brilliant hook shot at the Gabba. He might be tested here by Brett Lee. Square of the wicket player likes to cut by the pull shot. Well bowled. He gets him nicely down the fine leg for single. He's off the mark. And that's why they should be bowling to Patel. He's not as comfortable on the front foot. He's certainly not going to be comfortable with 150.8 Ks. That's what that one was. And he was quick enough down on it. But he takes it from middle and leg, leg, down to fine leg expertly. But get that length happening on middle and off or just outside off. And I think they'll uh, create some pressure. Averaging 14 and a half, but hardly had a chance yet. Well, that was quick. 149 Ks, it's one for five. Wonderful atmosphere here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. A generous applause for Brett Lee as he goes down to third man. Drava to come. Having a great summer with the bat. Patel on strike.
Tubby Spice, the second one. Mark Taylor, Vintage Richie. Keel, Keepy, Keeper Spice, Gilly. And Dada Spice, I don't know what that means. Ganguly. Field change, Bevan come across and Clark coming across now to third slip. So there's three slips or two slips and a whitish fourth slip. Backward point, cover point, mid off. Gone, no, didn't carry well. The field placing was spot on, just a fraction deep. Bowling fantastic as well. Again on the front foot, waiting for the ball, is on the up. Couldn't play a big shot and couldn't defend safely either. Perfect. Almost the full face of the bat to the floating slip. Good field placing, good bowling to back it up. This time he pushes it to point in the air. Simons does the fielding. Likes to play in that region and open the face of the bat. It's going to be tested here by Gillespie. He's bowling a beautiful line. Maybe one could come back in and trap, trap the batsman in front of those stumps now, having gone across him three times. Gone for that four. That's well played. He's only a young lab, he's got a lot of ability. Trouble, previous deliveries, he got a half hour and he went bang. Well, so much for being worried about the ball going across, just over pitches, bit fuller than it has been the three before it, and disappears. Well bowled. 140 Ks. I don't think this ball's much different to the one he plundered through covers. Just a touch shorter, probably. Gillespie nibbling around that outside edge. He wants it. Patel wants the boundary. It's a very good over, it's one for nine. Two of Gangul out for one, caught behind off Brett Lee. Waxman, very elegant, good in defence. Probably the place to bowl to Waxman is just outside the line of the off stump rather than straight. He does go fishing, as most top order batsmen do, if you're just maybe a foot outside of off stump rather than straight at the stumps. He plays very well against the number one side in the world. Enjoys the challenge. All three of those hundreds against Australia. Two of them in the last couple of months. Big chance here today. When you lose a toss here in Sydney and have to bowl first, you have to bowl well. This fielding side knows that they have to field brilliantly and that man will come into play i'm sure with ball and in the field clark young legs in the australian field no hayden gilchrist has a new slips partner standing next to him and ian harvey they have to field they have to be faultless right now they have to keep this score down to about 220 230 that'll be in their minds 200 if they possibly can simon cadditch comes into the one-day team today to replace the resting matty hayden second one day international so 
Bowling, lines, lengths and fielding expert right now. He was looking to work that on the onside and it's held its line. Waxman does like to work it down the onside of the pitch. It was 150 k's, sharply, not a lot of swing. the crowd totally into this game there's a nice little hush over it tight over or so now that they've sat through they're just getting ready gearing up headwear as usual is the, the theme of the day lots of kids out here last week before school goes back it's a big chance to see this Australian side go around against India it's a difficult game to get tickets to you have to be quick many tourists out from India All ready to crown their team, the world champions. That's well played and well bowled. 152 Ks and dead straight at the stumps. Maximum with a lot of time to play that uh, push through the cover. Well, they know they haven't got too long to get through before this ball becomes ineffective and the wicket an absolute belter for batting. The Indian's doing it tough for now, but it mightn't last too long. That's very good running. It's one for 11. Four overs bowled at the Sydney Cricket Ground. India one for 11 after winning the toss. Ganguly out for one. Port Gilchrist bowled Lee. Patel's on strike to Gillespie. Yeah. It's well run. Good work by Damien Martin. VVS Laxman up on strike now. Averaging just 29, he probably can do better than those starts. Promising starts all the time in his career. Lots of 20s and 30s. Only 300s in his 60-odd matches, I think it is. So uh, hopefully he's cottoning on to something. 200s in the last couple of months, as we mentioned. Johnny Walker would like to congratulate him on his effort in Brisbane, where Rowan Gavaskar got him a single on the second last ball of the match for him to hit a boundary and to bring up his 100 on the last ball of the match. Exciting times in Brisbane. Much sideways movement after the ball hitting the pitch. He's starting to line up the middle of the bat nicely. Just sneaking up on it, getting through this early period. Ready to play some shots a little later on. Well, VVS Laxman's been overshadowed by Tendulkar and Dravid and the captain, but on this tour, he's had no peer. He's played superbly. He's a brilliant batsman. He's great to watch. Good temperament. You can almost guarantee you could put the house on it that he'll do better than 29.4 in future years. Struggled early, didn't he? Hardly got off the mark until he made that first 50. 63rd match, plenty more. 
Tendulkar's up to about 326 matches, so they play a lot. And he's tall. He's got the advantage of being tall. He does play the hook and cut shots well. When he wants to, he picks the right ball and puts it away. Some good bowling here by Gillespie and Lee. They're not giving him too much width or they're not too short. It's a very good pitch. That's flat and firm. Hot preparation has allowed the ground staff to get it hard. There's some moisture underneath that. The, the key went right into it when I tested it this morning. He's gone for it. Not quite off the meat of the bat. But it's four. Just a fraction short. He went for the pull shot. Four runs. I think the time from me putting the key in and finding that moisture, it's probably gone already because there's no evidence of it now. Very consistently bouncing pitch. Maxman, even in the infant part of his innings, is able to get enough bat on it to beat Brett Lee at fine leg. Thing we saw about Laxman as he goes down and looks at those landing areas on the pitch, just checking how firm they are and how they're going to hold up, not only in his innings, but for tonight's innings. They'd love to see them loosen up a bit tonight, but he had trouble hitting the ball in the air. He was rusty, not comfortable hitting the ball in the air. Tremendous keeping along the ground, and if he's going to take that next step in one-day cricket, that's probably it. It's gone again, this time Lee should cut it off. Six from the over, it's one for 17. Sitting quick ground, it's one for 17. Fantastic atmosphere. Both sides in top form. India without Tim Dulka. Well, beautifully played, knocked down at backward point, at least two. Happy with two. Well, this is why he's so great to watch. Andrew Simons saved two, but he's now got the hang of this pitch. He's playing with full confidence, just stand and deliver. Gets into his crease a little bit in case the short ball's on the way. But just waits for the full ball onto the middle, into the gap. The Australians have got some work to do on that offside if he stays in for any length of time. Well, we all can well play. That was well bowled. It's 148 Ks. You're looking maybe for the bouncer that we push the Yorker in, maybe just a little bit down leg side, but that pace, that's well bowled. Thought he'd snuck it under this big lofty back lift, but the wrist snapped the bat down fast and late. I think even Laxman was pretty happy to get dig that out. Lee thought it was under. It's 155.2. Well bowled and well played. Good battle here. Oh, magnificent fielding. It should have been four. It was a magnificent stroke. And that's Australia at its best in the field. Simons diving away and stopped it as clean as a whistle. <laughs> and had to work really hard. What a shot. Not worried about the Yorker, which snuck almost through last delivery. Brilliant cricket all round.
full stretch. Beautiful fielding. And the crowd loved it. So did Brett Lee. Oh, that's, that's superb batting. First of all, the square cut. This time off the back foot. Running down the hill. I'll get three. We won't see a better stroke than that. 151 k's was the delivery, 51.5. It gets beautifully in position. The back foot hits it through cover. Well, the offside field is like a shooting gallery. Hasn't hit one of the three this over to the man. Simons has had to dive twice, and that one straight into the gap. Little transfer of weight going backwards as the bat's coming forward in the outfield. Lightning once again here. Good call. Well, this is the fastest that Brett Lee's bowled this summer. There's his line. Pretty good. Length is a little too short. Talk about eight metres. A lot of his balls are landing about eight metres. We've found over the over the course of the year that either side of six metres is a pretty good length. And that's six metres from the stumps, right from the stumps to there. That's the length, that's where it's measured from. So he's just been consistently a little too short and that's why Laxman's enjoying it. Six overs bold, it's one for 22. One for 22 as Richie Bonneau and Ian Chappell take up the commentary. Thanks, Bill. Hello to all of our viewers. Very warm day in Sydney. Ready, ready. A lot of good cricket in the first six overs. We've seen some particularly good pace bowling, some excellent batting, some brilliant fielding. Can't ask for much more than that, Rich. It'll do me for starters anyway. And uh, we'll just hope that it keeps on getting better. They're two very good teams out on the field here today. And uh, that's the Ganguly wicket. There's a bit of speed and zip about that from Brett Lee. Yes, they're great contestants, these two. Chase for Michael Bevan. He does well. He comes in very quickly. Yeah, I... I was saying early in the summer, Rich, when the when the Test series really built up to something uh, terrific, that when you consider that the last three series these two teams have had, two in India and one here, have all been very evenly contested. I'm, I'm talking now Test matches. Now we've got the one day as being evenly contested. I think this could be the next uh, really big rivalry in international cricket, India v Australia, which would be a terrific thing. High in the air, Bevan won't get there. Wasn't a bad bouncer. Got the desired result, uh, well, half the desired result, a miscue. But uh, not to quite the right spot. Just had it about off stump cramped uh, Patel a little bit. It's well bowled, but he's got away with four. Big gap out there. 
rare that you get an Indian player whose great strength uh, in Australia is the short pitch delivery, pulling, hooking and cutting, but that's uh, Patif Patel. He's a real dasher. When he came in, uh, he's grown a lot since I first saw him play. It was over in England when uh, India too there. Knee high to a particularly tiny bogong moth when uh, I first started him. It doesn't stop him playing his shots. And that was the thing that uh, came to notice very, very quickly in England. The pull and the hook. And uh, he gave uh, the England bowlers a bit of stick. Very good to watch he is. It is warm in Sydney. They we're talking about uh, 31 degrees. I think it might be even warmer. No! India one for 29. Ah. One for 29 after seven, India. There was a bit of a battle earlier on for the batsman. Things look to be just easing a little for the batsman now. It's a wild one from Brett Lee and called it wide eventually. Umpire Bucknor had a good long look as he often does. Brilliant shot. No ball, it is. Outfield is lightning fast. Well, that's not so good. And the position of the ball when it got down the other end of the pitch wasn't too crash hot either. Because uh, it allowed Laxman just to pick it off. That stroke he takes off middle and leg. Quite beautiful to watch. Brett Lee got rid of um, Ganguly outside off stump, but I think it was the lead-up balls that had the biggest effect because they were in a spot where Australia haven't bowled very often to Ganguly this summer. Fending off from the rib cage and uh, at leg stump again, not with quite the same bounce, and then the one outside off stump. I think that's a better plan than hammering away outside off stump on a regular basis. it will have been a confidence booster a psychological booster too for Brett Lee it's a good shot Bevan is quite wide Maxman really getting a move on with his running this time. I think India, when they get their full lineup uh, back, get Savag and Tendulkar opening, I think they should continue batting with Laxman at three. Such a good player of pace bowling. Very good player of spinners as well. But I think him at three and then Ganguly at four is a, a very, very good lineup. But I think uh, he's such a good player at three. Laxman, I think that's his spot. Oh. Sobering thought on that um, banner we just showed you.
Andy Bickles at the ready. Ian Chappell was uh, talking about in uh, future years, near future years, I think we can say, the competitive nature of the matches between Australia and India. And based on the series we've had in recent times, that is a definite goer that uh, there's a change in the balance of world cricket. When Australia toured India, it was one of the greatest series I've ever seen, short series, and I watched, didn't miss a ball of it on uh, television back here. This has been brilliant stuff throughout the summer when these two teams have been playing against one another. And uh, I think you can put a big tick against uh, what Ian Chappell has just remarked. That's quick. It's one for 36. Thirteen to Patel, eighteen to Laxman from twenty-two deliveries. And it is very warm. That's a wise idea. Bit of cream on the face. Chris. Just taking a tablet or two and swallowing plenty of water. It's going to be a rest for a couple of matches, Gilchrist. Brad Haddon's coming into the side. Gilchrist, um, after he made that big hundred, almost 200, he was looking out at one stage, he uh, seemed to suffer some reaction from that. Looked to me later in that day that uh, he was having back problems. And uh, there's been no mention of back problems. It might just have been that he was bending and stretching after the long innings. But uh, they are playing a lot and uh, it does take it out of you. The longer version of the game takes it out of you and the whiz-bang limited overs games does the same thing. That's a very good delivery from uh, Gillespie. We saw a bit of movement off the seam early on it appeared to be dying, but obviously uh, the odd one. And I guess when you've got a new ball with uh, quite big seams on it, something's going to happen occasionally. VVS Laxman is often talked about uh, as an Indian captain, a potential uh, Indian captain. I know Ravi Shastri is one who believes that he'll make a very good captain. He certainly gets very involved in team matters. I've seen him out on the field uh, offering advice to Ganguly. And this was after a, a play and miss from Patel in the last over. He was down there just to remind the young man what his job was. Don't, uh, don't give it away. Don't do anything silly. That's, that ball's gone. Just worry about the next one. He really does get very involved as a team member. Once again, almost uh, a repeat. That's beautiful bowling from Jason Gillespie. Two in, one over. Cutting back, almost cut him in half. A 
bit of bounce there. That was uh, well, both those balls that uh, beat Lakesman were good length balls, went over the top of the stumps. Ricky Ponting just making a few alterations to the field placing. And uh, they've brought fine leg up and pushed back a deep point. So the two men out now are on the offside. Now this one I think you could expect to be directed uh, just outside off stump. It's one for 37. Andy Bickle is going to take over from Brett Lee. Brett Lee uh, produced a pretty fast spell. Probably one of his, uh, his best of the summer at international level. Accuracy was pretty good. There was one no ball, three wides. But uh, he seemed to have pretty good rhythm, which generally means that the pace is good. There were a few deliveries up there in the 150k region. So perhaps signs there that uh, Brett Lee is regaining confidence. He's got past the man at backward square. They might get two. Brett Lee was up very quickly. Again, now backward square is beaten. It's becoming a, a nuisance partnership for the Australians. They got that early breakthrough, and there have been one or two fumbles since, and the bowling hasn't always been directed precisely where Ponting wants it, or one assumes he wants it, because of the field settings he's made. It's one for 41. to Patel, 22 to Laxman. Partnership 40 from 52 after they lost Ganguly early. He was out with just one run on the board.
Well, it's been very important uh, for this rivalry between Australia and India. You expect that India are going to be very competitive at home. They have been for so long now. But I think uh, this has been the making of this team playing well in Australia. Sir Afghan Ghuli talked about it at the toss, how he reminded the team that they were playing against the best in the world and this was a big challenge and they'd be judged on how they went in that challenge. It's a good shot. And will race away down the hill. Well, Gillespie had Patel miss queuing one earlier that went for four off the top edge way down to deep fine leg. Bevan unable to get around to it. Now that was uh, not the same height. He really got over it nicely. Once again, after that four, Laxman was down there talking to Patel. It's been very important for their self-belief, this, this form in Australia. Laxman, one of the real driving forces in this Indian side. It's a good combination of uh, experience and youth. I think that's always when a cricket team is at their best, when they've got good senior players and young guys with a lot of enthusiasm. See there the young quickie, Malaji, who has done extremely well. Murali Kartik getting a game today because um, Kumble is out with a niggling injury. So they've got a very good balance, this Indian side. Youth and experience. Beautifully hit. It was in the air, but it's gone away to the boundary very quickly. Gave that, I think. Really launched himself at it. And Laxman's at him again. Just to try to make sure they can take full advantage of this. Uh, Patel didn't get to 20 the other night. Played some lovely shots. But he's got that pretty much off the meat of the bat. One for 49. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. 22 to Patel with two boundaries in that last over. He's hit four boundaries now in a score of 22 from 27. Laxman 22 from 32. Beautifully into the gap. That'll bring up the 50. Oh, that's a good effort. That's a good effort from Andrew Simons. That ball was absolutely careering down the hill. I thought it got away from him and only a tight replay will show it. That is a great dive for a start. I think that's brilliant. Seen him pull off a couple of saves in Adelaide on the short boundaries uh, there that have been quite sensational. That's a wonderful piece of fielding. Might have been pitching just outside leg. Well, Bickle's cranky because he didn't get the uh, shout in his favour, and Patel's very cranky because. Uh, he missed the chance of uh, a boundary. And yes, it was outside. 
that blue zone pitching outside leg stump so shouldn't be out of it got that safely over cover With the, uh, with the very fast outfield in such beautiful condition here, fielding like this doesn't just happen by accident. They practice it. Simons practices it. The long stretch and the dive, just flicking the ball back. The timing of it is quite superb. The practice goes into it. Don't just think sitting back at home, oh, gosh. That's uh, nice to see him do that once. He's practiced it 50 times. No, no. I thought also a classic example of why they should change the law. I, I really don't understand why they've got this fixation about where the body is. To me, it's only the ball that matters. If the ball doesn't hit the rope, I don't see why they bother replaying. It's a classic example there. You can see quite easily that the ball has never got to the rope. Doesn't matter about the body as far as I'm concerned. The ball's the important thing. That's beautifully into the gap. Well, I think the answer to that uh, for Andy Bickle is that it may not have been all that bad a ball, I think that's what he was suggesting, but it certainly was a superb shot. Even Andrew Simons didn't even bother with that one, just went for a jog to pick it up. India, one for 59 after 12. We're seeing some glorious batting here against some pretty good bowling. Good contest. Mark Taylor is now in the commentary position and with him, Tony Gregg. Thank you, Ian. Yes, you're right. We've certainly seen some aggressive batting. Patel and Laxman, the two that are responsible. Oh, and that one beats the outside edge. There's been some pretty good bowling as well. And Gillespie into his uh, seventh over now. No wicket for 27. And Brett Lee bowled four overs today and took uh, the wicket of Ganguly, one for 18 and uh, a far better run per over rate just about four and a half uh, and that's a bit better than last time round so he's obviously uh, getting his act together a bit and that's well run nicely knocked into the gap the run rate at the moment it's uh, hovering around the four and three quarters nudging up towards five so uh, that's not too bad. One for 60. They've got wickets in hand. Guys like Dravid, uh, Gavaska, Yuvraj and Badani, they can all bat. So there's a bit of batting to come. Afternoon, Mark. Afternoon, Tony. And good afternoon to everyone at home. Yes, the wicket there of Saurav Ganguly in the second over, that was Brett Lee's first over. That can often help. Generally does help when you're a bowler. Particularly when you've been struggling a bit for form. I've been watching Brett Lee and I think he's been slowly improving always felt that Brett may have just come back a little bit too early from an ankle operation that he had last year and uh, he may well have been feeling physically fine but he didn't have a major 
operation like Brett did on an ankle and you're bowling and you're running in bowling like he does. He charges in, slaps the foot down, bowls about 150 k's. It's, you've got to get over the mental side of having an injury. And I just wonder if he wasn't... <laughs> got that away nicely. Just a single though. Just wonder if he wasn't just suffering maybe on the mental side of recovering from that injury when he first came back into the side. Since well, probably Christmas, he started to bowl a bit quicker. The outswing is coming back. Now he's just got to work a little bit on his control. But I feel just watching him that he's certainly improving. And an early wicket today makes all the difference. He looked a lot better today. Hopefully, from an Australian point of view, it's a, a sign of things to come. Yes, he's, um, he's just off the ground at the moment. Hogg is uh, out there. He's 12th man today. They're finding the gaps here, all right, and uh, this Indian crowd, or, sorry, should I say the, the Indian section of the crowd, and uh, there's a big section of them. They've come uh, pouring into the ground today, and they were here, lots of them, very early. They're uh, so, so keen on cricket. And boy, have they been uh, cheering these guys today. Already a good crowd in. Work day here in Sydney. You usually expect the crowd to build up later in the day after about five o'clock but it's already quite a few people in and you're right Tony there's plenty of Indian supporters great to see and I, I think they're just generally enjoying the contest between Australia and India well that's out that's caught behind yes up goes the finger just a little spar outside off stump there fate little nick on it and you could see immediately by the reaction there of Gilchrist that he'd got a touch on that one it took a while for the umpire's finger to come up but that's the end Unfortunately, of Patif Patel. I don't feel this was a slower ball from Gillespie. Yeah, off spinner. Beautifully bowled. Just carried through to Adam Gilchrist, but it was the fact that he took the pace off it, did Jason Gillespie. Ran his fingers across the back of the ball and got a little bit of turn, a little bit of bounce. Beautifully bowled. And Patif Patel departs for his highest score of 28. 2 for 63. Well, this is game seven of the VB series and Raul Javid has just uh, walked out to the centre and uh, he got <laughs> he got a mixed a mixed reception here of course uh, involved in uh, controversial circumstances up at the Gabba with that uh, that ball and the lolly incident and uh, you can hear half the crowd here booing and all the Indians of course uh, just love him well, he definitely wasn't innocent, there's no doubt about that. That is a stone-cold certainty. And, of course, uh, joining the fun, <laughs> the umpire. <laughs> it's uh, quite a character, Steve. He was... Uh... <laughs> oh, dear. Well, it did co cost him half his match fee, Tony, for uh, his little incident with a... Cough lolly or a lozenger or something like that. Well, Rahul Dravid now on strike. He's just up at the Gabba a couple of nights ago. He was involved in an incident where he, well, allegedly rubbed some
cough lolly or something from his mouth onto the ball. Uh, he says it was a, an accident. He didn't realise he had the, the lozenger on the hand. It's making quite a nice shine, though, on that ball. At the end of the day, the match referee, Clive Lloyd, said, mate, you can't do that, which you certainly can't do. Mate, he was just plain stupid. It's as simple as that. He falls into the category of uh, a couple of his mates, I suspect. Uh, Tendorka did exactly the same thing going back a little while, except he was picking the seam, uh, and there was no doubt about that either. And uh, just a little bit before that, I'm just trying to think of anyone else. Atherton. Atherton was the other one. Atherton, of course, had dirt in his pocket, and he was caught on the camera doing exactly that. Now, in, these, in this day and age, all those cameras out there, pretty silly. I think he's quite lucky to get away with only 50% of his match fee. I reckon it was just a practical joke, Tony. I reckon he was just trying to make it nice and sticky on one side, so when he threw it back to the bowler, the bowler would have all this sticky stuff all over his hand. A bit of a practical joke that went wrong. Yeah, the bowler happened to be Gunguli, who was standing right opposite him at the time. I reckon Gunguli was encouraging him. I reckon he should have lost off of his match fee as well. Well, the reason he's out there is Jason Gillespie's picked up a wicket. We saw uh, Brett Lee remove Ganguly. Ganguly earlier in the day. It's a lovely little off cutter or an off spinner. Dropped it back to about 120 k's that delivery, where he's been bowling most of his deliveries to Patif Patel around about 140. Little off cutter, and it also bounced, got the edge, and just carried through to Gilchrist. Excellent piece of bowling. Yes, it was. Just moved a little bit off the seam, and that is enough. Oh. That's a good length and a good line, too, there. Just outside off stump. Rahul driver right in behind it. And so, um, two very experienced players at the crease now. Dravid with Laxman out there. And uh, they'll play... I think they'll play it sensibly as well. Dravid is... Uh, pretty smart character he's uh, he's the sort of bloke it seems to me who uh, knows what is required and right at this moment in time they need to put together another partnership here at the same time they need to keep the run rate up well oh, that's a good shot into the gap and away she goes for four so Rahul Dravid is off the mark with a beautiful square cut and that's been something the Indians have done all summer both in the one days and in the test matches, when the Australians have bowled a bad delivery, it's generally gone for four. It's found the gap. Here, Bickle's a bit short. He's a bit wide. Now, remember that Rahul Dravid's just come to the crease. No matter. He puts it away. And uh, Bickle, who probably thinks he's got a new batsman, a chance to attack, goes for a boundary. Well, that's well played, too. That's beautifully played. Drive it onto the front foot. Nine runs off the over. The Indians are keeping the scoreboard ticking over. It's two for 72. Out the middle, we've got uh, Ian Harvey. He's replacing Jason Gillespie. Oh, yes, Des! Uh, as you'd expect, a fairly defensive field. Two catching men are at uh, short mid wicket and short extra, or short extra cover. Uh, one of those catching men is Jason Gillespie, who's in the left of screen there, the short cover. Maybe he's had a bit of a word to the captain, said, mate, I'm sick of fielding in the deep. Give me a chance in whether the quick catches are, are required. Nice, yes, it's, um, it's going to be quite interesting, this little battle here, because he does uh, mix it up a little bit, Harvey. Bowls that slow ball quite well. And, uh, of course, if you're whipping it away on the onside and it doesn't quite arrive, it quite easily pop up. Now, you're just going down the pitch there and just knocking down the surface. Uh, it just seems to me that by comparison with the last pitch, this one's a bit better. He, uh, the groundsman here only had four days to prepare that last one, uh, and I don't think he was quite satisfied that he'd got it exactly right. Oh, it's in the air and over the top. Yes, uh, there's no way Harvey is going to be able to get away with bowling at even slightly short at his pace, especially not when it comes to bowling to uh, Laxman, who was on strike then. He does mix it up pretty well, though, Ian Harvey. Changes his pace very well. That one was about oh, 125. Quickest one's probably around 130. He also has a couple of different slower deliveries. 
in the air and just short just short oh boy we've seen a few of those uh, one in at the Gabba yesterday just uh, popping up off the ground into the players hands Martin there diving forward trying to get to that one but not quite making it I just thought for a fleeting moment this one might have carried Martin trying to come forward just a bit of turf prior to the fingers no luck for Harvey Balling Ian Yes and doing exactly the right thing just shaking his head uh, there Martin Yes so that's what you've got to be careful of with him uh, you quite rightly point out that uh, a slightly slower ball when you go driving it away on the onside just pop it up in the air there and they've got the fieldsman all around well that's nicely played too in front of square whipping it away it's running down to the boundary boy this outfield is nice and fast it is absolutely superb two for 76 The run rate's over five now. So Laxman and Dravid. Keeping things moving here. Laxman is looking uh, absolutely superb. 35 or 45, and we've seen some superb shots from him already. Oh, into the gap again. Dravid. Oh, boy. Dravid has come out here, and he's hit three fours. And he's got 12. That uh, booing and jeering didn't last very long. They've been drowned out by the Indians here. They were three superb shots. That's three fours now. I was interested to see how Rahul Dravid would come out and play after the uh, drama he had at the Gabba, losing half his match fee and the embarrassment that goes with it. That's out. That's caught behind. That's a beautiful delivery. Dravid just pushing at that one. He wasn't having a real go at it. It was magnificently bowled. Sure, it might have been just a little bit wide, but I'm sure it swung away and may even move a little bit off the seam as well. That's well bowled. Good length as well. Yes, the length was the key. That was no doubt about it. Just a bit shorter than the previous one. A couple of big drives we've seen from Dravid facing Andrew Bickle. This time Bickle gets the length right. Just a little bit of sideways movement. Got him. Big wicket for the Australians. Dravid's gone from 12. Only seven balls faced. India, three for 80. Three down for 80 now, just when the Indians looked as if they were going to take control. They were getting stuck right in. Australia have nipped in with another wicket. And it's now Yuvraj Singh, also a very aggressive player, young player. Lots of experience under his belt already in one day international cricket. Look at that strike rate. Very good. He doesn't waste any time, I can tell you. 
his man of the match, Yuvraj Singh, in the last match against Zimbabwe on Tuesday night. So he's in good form as well to go along with Dravid and Laxman and Ganguly and Tendulkar have all, all made runs. Yeah, he's 69 there, man of the match performance. The Australian doing well, picking up wickets. And uh, as we've often found in these one-day internationals, that that's about the best way and sometimes the only way to keep the scoring rate down. Just a little bit of movement off the seam. Just went away enough, but it was also the length that was associated with that movement. Dravid coming forward, ball hitting up near the shoulder of the bat. Beautifully bowled. Yes, that's right. The length was perfect. Bickle is uh, the Australian bowler that gets that right on a regular basis. Oh, again, squirting off the edge down to third man. Again, encouraging the drive there, trying to get the batsman driving. See if you can pick up uh, any movement here. I don't think there was any swing there. Just hit the seam, didn't it, and went away a little bit. Just enough. It only has to move about two inches, that's about all. And that's all it did. If you can force the batsman to come forward looking to find the ball, and he's not there for the half volley, that's when you get the edges. Oh, a ball. Bickle uh, scowling a little bit, uh, understandably so. Laxman trying to play that fancy little whip of his to the onside. Again, that one probably held up a little bit. What I've liked about Andrew Bickle so far is that if he's erring, he's generally erring full. Which is always a good way to err as a fast bowler. I don't want to get too short, particularly in one-day internationals. And try and force the batsman to drive as much as possible. Nice bit of carry through to the keeper as well. Seven on a wicket, it's three for 83. well placed as well they won't catch that one boy this is a beautiful uh, outfield it's uh, almost like a really fast green golf green fantastic the way the ball runs and just keeps running well, we've been treated to some wonderful batting by both sides so far this summer we've seen it from australia for a number of years now but really in recent times have we seen it from an opposition side but all the Indians have played well at times. Beautiful shots off the front and back foot. Uh, started with Ganguly in the Brisbane Test match where he showed plenty of courage and commitment. Came out and scored 140 in a Test match. That, I suppose against the odds, people didn't rate his chances of doing well here in Australia. So he set the scene and, and people like Laxman and Dravid continued it on in Adelaide. Tendulkar here in Sydney in the test match and now even Yuvraj Singh who's only just joined the uh, Indian squad for this VB series is now starting to cash in and play some lovely shots as well. It's been a treat for commentators and spectators but not so much for captains. Ricky Ponding changing the field quite regularly at the moment. Yes, uh, it's quite in talking about captains, it's quite uh... It's quite interesting. It might just be worthwhile dwelling on the uh, the difficulty of being a captain of an Indian cricket team. It really is uh, a pretty difficult job. You've got a, a, a nation that is as fanatical as they are. You've got to have a pretty thick hide because um, they do. There's a first one back there. They do run with the hares and hunt with the hounds, so to speak. If you're going well. Boy, you're just uh, the bee's knees. But if you're not, the reverse applies. More so than anywhere else. The status of uh, India in the context of world cricket, well, the writing has been on the, world, on the wall in that regard for years. Economically now, 
um, it gives more to cricket than any other nation in the world and that's mainly because of the incredible television rights that Indians are prepared to pay to watch uh, their team play overseas it's 3 for 89 Laxman on 37, Yuvraj with him. And uh, Bickle, who's been looking dangerous, already has uh, a wicket, the wicket of Dravid. Got him out for 12, Dravid hit three fours. He looked as if he really did mean business. And then he got a beautiful delivery. And the Australian side must be wondering how they're going to remove VVS Laxman. Once again, he's the, the rock. He's the one they can't seem to get out at the moment. He's got three one-day hundreds to his name and throughout his one-day career, and they're all against Australia. Uh, his highest score was against Australia in his last one-day international against them. And once again, he's off to a good start today. He's 37, 48 balls faced, and runs all around the wicket. And that doesn't surprise me. He has the ability to hit cover drives, square cuts. When you get too straight, he whips you through the onside with those lovely wrists. He is particularly tough to bowl to. I think one person who has worried him at times during the Test match series was Stuart McGill. And I just wonder if the selectors aren't maybe in the back of their minds thinking about maybe adding McGill at some stage to this one-day squad. He seems to be one guy who's regularly picking up wickets in one-day cricket. He tends to go for a few runs, Stuart McGill, but he does pick up wickets and. I just feel he is one person who has worried VVS Laxman at times so far this summer. There's a breakdown of his one day career. It's a bit like his test match career. His strike rate is better against Australia than it is on a career basis. All 300s against Australia. His test match career is very similar. He has four of his I think it's about six or seven test match hundreds against Australia. And the average is over 60 in test matches against them, against them as well. So he has got to be a worry for the Australian bowling side. I suppose really that, uh, that begs the question, why? Why would it be? And I suppose the only, the only thing one could say is that he, um, he responds to this big match occasion. You know, he, uh, he, he loves playing against Australia. He must do. He realises the importance of it. Importance of it kicks on. He's looked uh, superb again today. He's played some wonderful shots. The one that really springs to mind is that lovely uh, drive that he played through the offside of the back foot. Sensibly changing their mind there. A lot of people here in Sydney remember Laxman scoring that 167 in the test match here four years ago. The last test match of the series. That India only made 261 in the second innings and he made 167 of them. So it's no surprise to the Sydney people that he could play. The strange thing is he hasn't done all that well in one day cricket up to recent times. In, uh, in the CUB series four years ago he had a nightmare against Australia and Pakistan. Not so this year. We're looking for two here. Four of the over, three for 93.
Three for 93. Harvey continuing. <laughs> and uh, in the commentary box now, it's going to be Bill Lurry and Ian Chappell. Thank you, Tony Gregg. The run mates five runs per over. And India will need that. This good pitch in a very fast outfield here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. 19th over. signs with Ian Harvey's bowling that uh, perhaps the odd one is not coming on a few balls uh, hit in the air in front of the wicket a bit of batting still to come Gavaska and Badani both uh, batsmen at first class level who bowl a little bit we keep hearing about Gurkha's uh, batting ability but we haven't seen it in Australia Batan can bat a bit Raj Singh uh, looks to be a fine young player, he's only 22 years of age, but he's a very sweet time of the ball, tallish lad, man of the match at the Gabba, the 69 off 79 deliveries faced, good field. Field is well placed there. They've got his uh, his favourite drive picked out and well covered. Australia's uh, strongest fielder. Well, perhaps Ricky Ponting, I think, uh, would still be just ahead of Andrew Simons, but not much in it. Six men on the offside. There's a third man, a deep point and a deep long off. So the line will be off stump or thereabouts. Just three men on the onside. Now all going back. Long on, square leg, and the man of deep fine leg coming up inside the circle. And Harvey's going to be full and at off stump. Oh. Plenty of singles in front of the wicket on the onside. I think that's why uh, Ian Harvey has left those gaps there. Perhaps trying to get your Rudds to try and work the ball to the onside. Got a hold of that into the gap, down the hill, it's lightning fast. Four runs off the over. 19 gone. It's three for 97. Run rates 5.1. Bickle continues. Waxman glances down to fine leg for a single. Dubrad Singh performed very well in the game at the Gabba against Zimbabwe when his side was in a bit of strife. Quite often he, he gets to come in late in the innings and uh, is expected to do damage quickly but on this occasion he had to get his head down rebuild the innings and then do a bit of damage at the end and he certainly did that and because of that dig he is our KFC greatest hits man here at the SCG I think what's been happening is uh, he wanted somebody out of the way. The batsman wanted somebody out of the way, and the sightboard operators thought that uh, they want the sightboard moved. So it's uh, a bit of a mix up, I think, in communications. 
I think that square that uh, Steve Bucknell was drawing was the site board. That's what was to be moved. Well, great shot fielded at cover. Beautifully timed off the back foot. Harvey did well. Lovely piece of willow that Yuvra just got. We often talk about uh, Matthew Hayden having a lovely sounding bat. He's an excellent timer and a powerful striker of the ball. But Yuvraj uh, really thumped that one. Andy Bickle has a big wicket of Raul Dravid, but he's quite expensive. He's been sitting 6.3 runs per over. Must be one for 31. We one for 18 off four. Nicely played. It's the single. Full house here at the City Cricket Ground. And Waxman turning it on again. He's in the 40s. He's pacing himself beautifully. Waxman has been agitated uh, all innings by something that's going on there by the sideboard. Obviously someone moving around while the bowler is uh, running into bowl. Last thing you need. This time it is the site board that needs to be moved because Andrew Bickle is coming around the wicket. 100 coming up in the 20th over, so the run rate is good, but Australia will be pleased that they've sent three back to the pavilion. Overs bowled it's three for 100. This summer's greatest hits are at KFC. Right now, KFC is giving you the chance to win the perfect day at the second one day final at the SCG. The perfect day includes a private box for you and seven of your mates. You'll visit the Channel 9 commentary box, watch the team warm up before the match, and receive your own authentic Australian team uniform. So grab a KFC commentary box or cricket variety bucket to enter. Conditions apply. Three for 100. Harvey to continue from the round weekend. Sure, of Gangui won the toss, elected to bat. He was the first to go. That we bowled two at his body and he pushed one off the seam and Gilchrist took a sharp catch. It was in one for one. And we delighted, and rightly so. It was a good over to Ganguly. Partnership was uh, 62 between Patel and VVS Laxman before a change of pace from Jason Gillespie picked up the little left-hander. Adam Gilchrist right in the action. Three down and he's taken three catches. In for drive it straight to the pitch. He belted Bickle for three boundaries. Only faced seven deliveries, but he got a good one. Moved away. Genuine nick through to Gilchrist. It was three for 80. Nice. Oh, 
This pitch will suit Ian Harvey. Just slow it down a fraction, make the batsman make the pace. The ball not coming onto the bat. Gone, but he meets him. That's four. It's only three men on the onside. Well, I've seen picking it up beautifully. It wasn't all that short. Very quickly into position, Yuvraj. They brought Lee up from that uh, long on position early in the over. With fine leg now going back. Yuvraj has realised that anything short, if he can get it into that mid wicket area. Fair chance it's going to be four. It's Tommy Thompson whip it into the gap on the onside. That's three for 105. Seven wickets in hand, India. If they can get to 279, it'll be a very good total on this pitch. Long way to go yet. Andrew Simons from the members' end to bowl off spin. I think India would be, uh, well, they should be happy with 250. I think 250 would be a very good score here at the SCG. It certainly has been historically. Be a, a long batting lineup once again for Australia. But it's a hard, hard ground to chase under lights. Chase a decent total. Good start. Right up in the block hole. Waxman not getting another strike away. He's 43 off 57 with just the two fours. Good figures for Andrew Simons. Picking up wickets consistently. Oh, that's nice. He played into the gap. Three men in the deep on the onside. They'll pick up three. Well, that was uh, that was a Muhammad Azaruddin shot if I've ever seen one. Uh, just taking it probably from about off stump, going with the the spin, just rolling the wrists on it. That was Azaruddin at his best. Deep, we get two more. Well, it was left and right hand in combination working for India, both stroke players. Uh, Singh 16, just 23 faced. Looks in very good touch. Getting a little bit of curve, Andrew Simons. thing that he does well is mix his pace and he does it uh, very subtly oh. five from now over three for 110 
The run rate's still five runs per over. Nebraska to come. This partnership is uh, 30 of 40. Previous Laxman really well suited to this number three spot. He played extremely well there in Brisbane against Australia and uh, looking good again in the number three spot. He may well have uh, got himself a permanent opportunity at number three. Hey. In the air. Oh, just over cover. Goes out for a single. Well bowled by Harvey. Got him driving on the up. Just cleared cover. Now here's a bonus run. Ian Harvey, I think, was uh, trying to tidy up footmarks. Uh, he wasn't actually watching the ball. That <laughs> should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. And Harvey, in his sixth over, has no wicket for 25. Good solid partnership here. Just short of the fieldsman. Knock, knock on. They should get two. Ricky Ponting was the man at mid-wicket. Ricky Ponting, that one hurt. I think he might have got it on the wrist or maybe the forearm, but it bounced in the rough area just in front of him. He was trying to block it with the body. I'd say it's uh, yep. Yeah, it's got the wrist, and they uh, really do smart. Well played, this man deep at long off. BVS Waxman's on 49. There it is, that's well played. He's having a great summer. He's almost got the Australian bowler's measure. Doesn't mind this cricket ground either. Century here in the uh, Test Series previous tour. Century in uh, the recent Test Series. Now he's halfway there in this one day. -er. He looks so relaxed. Controlling this innings, he's striking at 80, which is quite good. Just the two fours. That's oh, down the third man for a single. Five off the over. 25 gone. It's three for one, two, four. Simons. Oh! Attempted sweep doesn't work. I think the Australians might have been appealing there, hoping that that would take the batsman's mind off where the ball was going, because it was rolling perilously close to the stumps. Gone for it. Great shot. He's a fine player. Murad Singh putting down your little black book. 22 years of age. Plays all the shots. Does that as he get into the test batting lineup? No chance at the moment. They've got such a powerful batting lineup. He's not a bad bloke to have uh, sitting on the sidelines. You get into a lot of uh, international sides as a test match batsman. Good field. 
That's what they need. Strengthen their fielding. Niraj Singh does that. That's true, beats Connie with just a single and a bevan. Sweeps, sweeps well into the gap. It's four more. That's beautifully played. 26 gone, three for 134. Three for 134 as Mark Tara and Richie Benoit take up the commentary. Thanks, Bill. Nice time to arrive. Some lovely stroke play going on out there. 51 for Laxman. And 37 from just 44 for Yuvraj Singh. Australians will need to get a grip out there. Batsman out so far, Ganguly 1, Patel 28, Dravid 12. Wickets are shared, Lee Gillespie Bickle. And a very good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Richie. Good afternoon to everyone at home. Good to see Ricky Potting trying to keep the pressure on. He hasn't fallen into the trap that we've seen, particularly Heath Street from Zimbabwe doing in that is when the pressure goes on, just push all the fieldsmen back. He still has five men inside the circle, and both mid-on and mid-off still up, saving a single. So even though Laxman is playing well, he's on 51 from 67 balls faced, he's still tempting him to try and go over the top down the ground. At least he's not giving him singles everywhere. Giving him singles square of the wicket like that, protecting the square cut and the pull shot, Still forcing the batsman, particularly VVS Laxman, to hit down the ground. And with uh, Yuvraj Singh, tactics have changed. Mid off and mid on have gone back to Yuvraj. And obviously, there's a feeling within the Australian side that he hits the ball over the top much better than Laxman does. And those areas of the ground are much more protected. great thing about these two teams uh, in all the matches that played out here and um, in the ones in the last series we saw in India was that the quality of the play and the pace of the play has been such that the captains have had to be thinking every second of the day they had to make changes adjustments a touch of innovation about their captaincy not just been a thing of letting it all roll on. Nice work, well, I think the quality of the batting has been so good too that it's made it difficult for captains. Oh, scoring hasn't been all in one area. It hasn't just been batsmen looking for short balls or necessarily bad balls. A lot of, a lot of batsmen from both sides hitting good balls for four. And that puts added pressure on the... On the uh, the bowling side. It's got a little shower passing over the ground at the moment. Quite heavy too. And in fact, the players are going straight off the ground. So it's come very quickly and, and uh, quite hard. I can tell you on the radar, it has uh, little bits of blue, some yellow, and some very disconcerting bits of red and pink. 
that's the Clive Churchill stand. That's looking away down south, and that's quite often where the rain will come from. Storms will come from there, and probably a bit further around to the right, more towards the west. And at the moment, it doesn't look too bad out that way. So fingers crossed that we, uh, well, firstly, can finish the Indian innings off, and then we can get the Australian run trace later tonight. A little break that uh, the players have been off. They've been off the ground for about oh, 18, 19 minutes. Been a good opportunity for uh, the Australians, particularly Ricky Ponting, to catch his breath and just have a bit of a, th a few thoughts about how he's going to use his bowlers from here on in. I think you're right, Richie. The Indians haven't got away from Australia just yet, but they were. It was starting to look that way. These two have added 56 and 69 deliveries. And Ricky Ponting will probably just enjoy that little break, a chance just to regroup and uh, maybe work on some new tactics. And hopefully, curb the uh, the run rate. Last ball of uh, Harvey's over. So it remains at uh, 3 for 136, 27 overs gone. Dravid was out for 12, Laxman is 52 not out, and uh, Yuvra Singh 38 not out. Let's stand down uh, the southern end of the ground, Clive Churchill's Dan, named after one of the greatest rugby league footballers ever to pull on a boot. Legendary Clive Churchill, and just on the left hand side of that stand used to be the Sheridan stand. Just hold it used to be the Sheridan stand, and uh, just there is where I sat to watch my first cricket match here at the SCG 1940. Don Bradman and Bill O'Reilly played and a host of other champions Andrew Simons Simon catch the fields from there into the Australian side for only his second one day international called up to uh, replace Matthew Hayden who's just being rested to try and get over a few niggles that he has apparently I'm sure he'll welcome the opportunity to wear the, the coloured clothing he did particularly well in the test matches this year did Simon Kadic he's had an interesting summer because he did well in the limited overs domestic matches to come under the selectors notice for the test A good shot and probably a great save well that was a brilliant effort from Damien Martin what a feeling he may just have got rid of this ball before his legs went over the rope yep I reckon that's a brilliant effort and not only did he stop the boundary he kept it to two balls out of the hand now yeah that's fine and uh, flicked it back to Brett Lee with the strong arm. And Andrew Simon's opting to bowl his off spinners today. We've seen him bowl a few medium paces at times, but generally here at the Sydney Creek Ground, where it's more noted to be spin friendly, generally bowls off spinners. He's going for around six and over at the moment. It's just a point where India could get away from Australia. Oh, yes, well, that's well bowled. A good uh, sliding top spinner coming into the left hand at 340.
Well, Harvey and Simons now bowling in tandem. And when the Australian team, or when the players left the ground some 10 minutes ago, we believe the Australians were around about four overs down from where they needed to be at this stage of the innings. That's the last thing you need, is to be behind your over eight. Now, there will be a rescheduling of the, the uh, close of innings time because of the time lost due to that rain shower. But the Australians will really have to get through their overs, and that's probably one reason why Harvey and Simons will bowl in tandem. They will get through their overs particularly quickly. Lovely wristy stroke. The interesting thing about uh, the styles of the Indian players is that they're so adaptable. When they play on their own pitches, which are slower and with less bounce, they're brought up with this wonderful wristy method. And that stands them in good stead down here in Australia where there is plenty of bounce and pace. The pitches are faster. The ball comes off the pitch faster. Yuvra Singh was man of the match two nights ago in the game against Zimbabwe. And once again, he started well here today, 42 from 51. It's a lovely stroke play, but also the first ball of the over, he, sorry, the second ball of the over, he made, well, a difficult two look easy. And it was brought about by a beautiful piece of running. Just keep your eye on Yuvra Singh, who plays the shot and then turns at the bowlers. And look how low he gets. It's in low, he's facing where the ball is. Look how low he gets, the bat's just over the line. That's exactly how to run between wickets. Any of our younger viewers who are looking to work out how to turn at the non-strikers end, that's how you do it. That's how you make a one into a two. Brilliant. exhortation out there now from the Australians Ponting and Gilchrist the experienced players in the team and the others will know that this is a critical time we're just pushing up now to the end of the 29th over three for one forty six Andrew Simons is continuing, and uh, Australia are continuing to try and get through the rovers as quickly as they can. We believe that the schedule time for this innings to finish is now 6.04 local time, which is an hour and 18 minutes from now. And Australia have to bowl 21 overs in that time, so they really are going to need to get through the rovers quite quickly to avoid being fined. They'll uh, need to have their thinking caps on to work out the best combination of bowlers. Clive Lloyd uh, is the match referee here. Clive Lloyd has uh, already slapped a fine on one of the players taking part in this match. And uh, when his decision was questioned, he came back very, very strongly with a statement he issued. Nice, oh. no, good work. Oh. 
And the problem the, the Australians do have is that they have a left and right hand combination to bowl to at the moment, which means that Andrew Simons, who prefers to bowl around the wicket to the left hand, has to go back over the wicket when bowling to uh, BVS Laxman. So there's always a little delay there. Very short run up, Andrew Simons. He likes to get through his overs quickly. Just the change of the angle, slowing him down. In the match the other evening where uh, India defeated Australia, it was, if there was one thing that stood out as uh, the reason they won, it was that they didn't lose many wickets, only four wickets went down, and they were able to give it a dash towards the end of the innings. No, he won't get the call, three for 151. Well, Laxman and Yuvraj Singh have now added 71 of 88 balls. Done it in style. Laxman's only hit two boundaries himself. He's had absolutely no problems so far with the bowling. Michael Clark is being introduced to replace Ian Harvey. And Harvey with eight overs for 38. Once again, I think this is a move A. Try and change things a bit with Michael Clark being left arm orthodox spinner, but. I think more so to try and get through some overs. Michael Clark and Andrew Simons bowling at 10 and will get through overs very, very quickly. Well, this is a good indication of uh, why it's so important for the captain to keep the game moving out there in these limited overs fixtures. You can be fined. And uh, apart from that, you have to make bowling changes that you mightn't actually want to make. He may prefer to bowl someone else at the moment, but uh, Michael Clark is on. And as Mark Taylor points out, part of the reason for that will be for them to get um, through their overs. Uh, that was good running between the wickets. They picked out uh, the right man, realised the arm isn't as strong as it used to be. Adam Gilchrist vice captain just having a word to Ricky Potting the captain there mid wicket and it may be about the fieldsman on the boundary on that eastern or sorry the western side of the ground it's quite a long boundary over towards the members at the moment the Australians just having trouble keeping that or shots like that last one to only singles Yuvraj Singh and Vivius Laxman picking up quite a few numbers of twos Well, uh, on the uh, the little formulae we dabble around with, it looks to me as though uh, a decent target would be 275 tonight. Michael Clark in these matches so far, one for 22, one for 14. No wickets for 16 and 26 in uh, other matches. Yes. Um, and the halfway mark, 25 overs, and around the 30 over mark. I reckon uh, something around 275. Oh. Well, the discussion that uh, Adam Gilchrist and uh, Ricky Potting have just had may be about the man right in the foreground of the shot there. That man there is right on the boundary. He's on the boundary for both batsmen. There's a deep point for VVS Laxman. And a deep square leg for Yuvraj Singh, the left hand. Well, Andrew Simons is the man. And that's once again smart thinking from Ponty. It's a quite, probably the biggest boundary on the ground is where he is at the moment. And you need a man with a strong arm who's also quick across the turf. And uh, Andrew Simons fits the bill on both those criteria. And the 
wide court. Don't think the Australians can cavil at that. One of the hardest thing to do in these uh, one the internationals, particularly here at the SCG and at the MCG, is trying to keep those singles, two singles, and stop the twos. Just slight delay as the sight screen still moving across. But Michael Clark was keen to bowl the ball, and uh, VVS Laxman quite rightfully pulled away. That's nicely placed. Beautifully placed away. It's three for 161. Conferences between the batsmen, between the Australian captain and vice captain, now the umpire and one of the batsmen. It's going to be Andy Simons again, he's on at the northern or Paddington end. So going to come around the wicket to the left hand. Singh on 49. Another match two nights ago with 69 against Zimbabwe. A good double coming up for him. That'll be wide. It's a nice piece of work from Adam Gilchrist. Very sharp piece of work. A to glove the ball. Probably stop giving away five wides. And B to get the bails off pretty quickly as well. for Yuvra Singh, good knock, back to back 50s, he is in delightful touch. Once again, great support from the crowd here, both Indians and Australians alike, I think they're enjoying the way the Indians are playing, it's very enjoyable to watch, I think Laxman's as good to watch as anyone in world cricket at the moment, Yuvra Singh is not too far behind. Risks taken at the moment by the Indians. Doing it quite comfortably. Scoring or averaging around about six runs per over at the moment. Without really hitting any big shots. shot quicker one from Simons beautifully played and it's three for 168 32 overs bowled, the run rate is 5.25. India doing it nicely. Both batsmen playing some lovely shots. 
and uh, some lovely piece of batting from uh, VVS Laxman in Michael Clark's last over. He was Michael Clark was trying to run in and bowl the last ball of the over when uh, the sight screen was still moving, but he stopped him. He said, "No, no, I'm not ready to, to face up yet." Got himself ready, and when he did, he got a, a wide one and found the gap and hit it for four. He may well get two for this as well. No, Bickle keeps it to one. But just a nice piece of composure from a man who's obviously very confident at the moment. Confident in his stroke play, but also confident enough just to know when he's ready to face up. Once again, that sight screen at that uh, southern end of the ground, just a bit slow for the Australians. They're trying to get through their overs. Extra man on the offside now for Laxman. There's two men behind point trying to save that back cut. It hits so beautifully from last over. Well, uh, this innings is taking on the pattern of that one I was talking about earlier where India beat Australia the other night. Only three wickets lost so far and 170 on the board. And well feel a three for 170. Just three wickets down. Here's Simons. There's no hurry, no fluster from these two. They're looking to keep wickets in hand and then give it a real thrash towards the end. Well, they didn't lose any more wickets uh, in that game I'm talking about up in Brisbane. But uh, that's the tactics, and good tactics too. If you can keep wickets in hand and keep the Scoreboard ticking over around about uh, six and over. It's a good going. And they came together at three for 80. The Australians have just removed Rahul Dravid. The feeling, I'm sure, amongst the Australians that they had their best chance of restricting India at that stage. And about an hour and a half later, India are doing it comfortably. They really are dictating terms at the moment. The Australians are trying to rip through some overs so they don't get fined. At the moment, India are just in cruise mode. Nice. Good, We're into the 34th over, and it's about an hour schedule time left in this inning so the Australians are catching up to the over rate they needed to be at it won't be all that long but they'll be able to if they want to change their bowling and maybe try a strike bowler to get a wicket and they desperately need one at the moment three for 174 Just the one ball to go in this over. Simon just had uh, 38 taken from his 6.5 overs. A wonderful shot. 
He swept one fine at the man fine leg. That one wide, and it's three for 178. Three for 178, 34 overs gone. 16 still to come. I still stand by 275 as uh, the score at the end of this innings. Ian Healy's coming to the box now, and with him, Tony Gregg. Thank you, Richie. Well, um, one way or the other, they must be relatively satisfied with that uh, run rate of theirs 5.23. 34 overs bowled. If they're still three wickets down, at uh, say the 40 over mark that's uh, around about six overs from now then we could see some fireworks yeah some serious fireworks and that's when richie benno's 275 is in danger it's a pretty safe score at the moment 275 it's going to take a, a bit of work 100 in 16 overs in one hour but yep they can do better Nuvraj playing a, a very good innings here as well. He's come in and uh, made 61 or 68 deliveries. Uh, Laxman, of course, has played well too, but uh, he's used up a few more balls. 70 off 90. But they've certainly set it up now nicely. Nicely to really go after the Aussie bowlers towards the end. And I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing the Aussie bowlers be a little better with the their second spells the fast men these spinners don't seem to be scaring the batsmen at all there's very little spin the sweep shots have got a lot of balls covered and their their sweeps for four they're not just singles so been very effective against the spin just like that he's able to watch the ball off the pitch and put it where he likes laxman and Nuvraj has been the same his 62 from 70 has been very reserved and he's only picked that strike rate up in the last couple of overs against simons and got the ability to, to take it easy or explode or to get the boundary away when necessary. Yes, Juvraj is the one, I think, who's capable of hitting the big sixes here. So uh, what he needs to do is, uh, at the right moment, let's uh, let himself really rip. And that's what the crowd, sort of a lot of them Indians, that's what they're looking forward to. They want some big hits here and uh, it will come alive the moment just uh, trying to steer it around picking up ones and twos it's three for 181 So Clark completed three overs. Uh, he's going for five and over. Simons for six and over. And uh, Bickle also went for six and over. They're the most expensive of the Aussie bowlers. Maxman and Yuvraj Singh going along nicely now. And uh, what are we going to see here? Brett Lee. Brett Lee back into the attack. Only four overs uh, so far. One for 18. But uh, I don't know what you think, Heels, but it, it seems to me that he's, uh, he's got control of a few little things that were slipping away from him. I'm not totally convinced yet. It has been an improved performance from Brisbane, but uh, there were still some wides and a no ball, three wides and one no ball. And uh, he was trying a few too many things for mine. Now his job here is to keep it tight at good pace. And I think he should be up more often around the six meter mark. Now in this spell, if he's gonna fire into the stumps, it's probably the four meter mark he needs to be up to. So that it's at the base of the stumps. 
It's, uh, the time he struggled has been towards the end when they really have milked him. They got stuck into him and smashed him all over the place. Now that's what uh, I think that he's going to have to prove to Ponting he can arrest. What I think happens to him when they start to get after him, he becomes a bit of an up or back bowler. He either bowls half follies or they're short. And he should be concentrating on just one thing. And that would be a Yorker. That first ball he's bowled to Laxman was perfect. He's got a little bit of reverse swing going. Very hard to score from. Well, he does pick him off beautifully there. Laxman should be looking for two there. That's not very good running. Throw is wide. It didn't really put the fieldsman under any pressure at all. Now, if you do get the ball swinging into Laxman, you better be careful. You better get it swinging into off stump, not into middle and leg. Because he's very comfortable working that blue one away. Worked it away well. Should have looked for two, but didn't. So, Brett Lee's got to control it. And, and now to the left-hander, he's going round the wicket. So, he's making a change. So I'm, I'm just a little concerned he's trying too much. So deciding to go around the wicket straight away, I would have thought that uh, if you're angling across the left hand, that might be worth uh, just a little bit of a try over the wicket first up, but uh, he's immediately gone around to angle it into him. He did go wide too, didn't he? Oh, the run-up was really wide, angling in at the batsman. I don't know whether that's bowling to Uvro's strength too much. Uvro's can whip through mid-wicket, and he's very confident driving from where the ball came from. So just got to be careful. Very wide angling straight in towards the batsman. Rhythm looks fine, but now you need control. You need to put it in right areas so that they can't score big runs from you. There he whips it away again. Beautiful player off his hips. Yes, it's a little different, isn't it? Uh, when he's over the wicket, he comes in at a normal angle. And then when he goes around the wicket, uh, it's slightly altered. Now, therein might lie a little clue for him. If, you, if you're coming in differently, maybe um, one of the little things that uh, he hasn't got down to a, a really good rhythm. You know, do the same thing. Certainly in terms of your run-up, you want to be identical, but he's way outside the return crease here. Oh, it's in the air and it's four. Well, just for a second, uh, it looked as if it may be the opportunity to pull off a brilliant catch. Ponting, did he get a little nick on it? I think he probably did. This is a brilliant shot, and this is the strength area we we're talking about through mid wicket. He uses the angle of the ball into him, just gets the middle of the bat on it. Ponting, absolutely horizontal and airborne, does nothing. Brilliant timing. That's a wristy flick and rocketed to the boundary. Seven off the over. Three for 188. Three for 188, and uh, Yuvraj on 67 now, timing the ball nicely. Laxman continuing to accumulate, heading up towards the century. And the run rate, uh, well, it's heading in the right direction as well, 5.22 and over. Yuvraj started this innings by playing some magical pull shots from good lengths just going right back on his stumps and pulling it through and over mid wicket and then the Australians bowled a bit wider to him and he's confident playing on the offside as well but it was a pull shot and we'll have a look where he scored his runs I'd be surprised if it's not 
heavily centred around mid-wicket, like where that ball went from. Just plants the feet on a lot of those offside shots, the same as the pull shots. They're the ones I was talking about. The sweeping has been exquisite. Fair bit of power to go with that exquisiteness. Have a look at his wagon wheel. And it's not too bad. Through here, I was expecting to see more through there. But he has got a few through mid on. So the Australians have bowled a little straight to him. But these are the sweeps. And we're talking about all down there. He's, he, he can sweep you from off the stumps. So you think you've bowled a good ball and it disappears. Well, that field is uh, nice and deep now. Out on the offside there, there's a one available there almost every time they push the ball into that circle. Yeah, it wasn't so long ago that Mark Taylor was saying it was good that Ricky Ponding had the field up. It was for Laxman. He had it back mid-off and mid-on back for Yuvraj, but <laughs> it's changed now. The Australians on the back foot. So a single every ball available if uh, they want it. And that uh, means six and over is a, a must, an absolute must. We had four and it uh, look a lot better than that. Clark's not going too bad. He, he's keeping it to singles and one or two dot balls per over. Just three off his last over. If he gets a dot ball away here, he'll keep this one to four off the over two. Pretty hard to get a dot ball away when there's only one man protecting the leg side. Three for 193. Right, well, Brett Lee again, whenever he's got the ball in his hand, it's always uh, exciting. He's fast and uh, he's trying to sort a few things out at the moment. He's over the wicket to Laxman. Oh, he's hit that one hard and straight. And a direct hit. Oh, hitting the stumps. Now, for Laxman, Ricky Ponning has got mid-off and mid-on back up for Brett Lee. And this is why they almost created some, some pressure on the singles. Great shot. Great timing. Kaditz gets across and makes the most of it. But VVS dodging Brett Lee makes his ground comfortably. But the field is up now for Uvraj as well. Kaditz is at mid-on for the lefty. Bevan's at mid-off. Asking him to hit over the bowler's head, maybe. So talking about this uh, this run-up of Brett Lee uh, around the wicket uh, seems to be coming in very wide. Just uh, just watch the difference. Uh, look at uh, how wide he is on the right there. He has to really move into his left and then straighten up down the pitch. Whereas uh, on the left, he's far more comfortable. Just comes in a nice straight line. Doesn't have to do any movement. See, at the moment here, yeah, he's really got to move in left. well played sweep will make sure they don't get more than one that was well done by Andy Simons too he cut down the angle the tendency is to circle the ball in these situations it's got such a big gap that it's the ball's just snuck into past Damien Martin look at the angle he's running into exactly where the ball was going to be cut off good throw there was no chance of two the nasty thing about that Brett Lee split screen was both balls were on the legs and on the pads of the batsman, the right-hander and the left-hander. He's got to get his lines right. Is that delivery, for example, uh, to a guy like Laxman, that's uh, a better length. Any shorter than that, and of course he would be just flicking it away on the onside. He's a very good player. 77 he's got at the moment. Yuvraj on 70. 
A really big crowd here today. Wonderful atmosphere at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Can he get one through the offside field for four, or perhaps down the ground for four? That's what he'll be looking for. There's that little whip again. He plays it so easily. Too short. That's why it's so easy. You can get it up there, trap him in front of the crease maybe, get him on the front foot, not so comfortable on the back foot, but where's Laxman scored his runs? We'll have a look at exactly where he's done his. He's way back in the crease. Great use of his feet. And he scored all round, very light on through cover. That This area is a bit light on, but this is his traditional area, whipping onto the leg side, powerful shots through mid on, light through the covers. Well, that's a tidy over. Three off it. Three for 196. Michael Clark continues. They try to push the fieldsman, and back they come. Oh, well, they've asked the question. He's pretty slow. Yes, he's going to have a little look there, but I think uh, <laughs> it looks as if the batsman's quite happy. I'm going to say that Laxman really does seem to me to struggle to get going, and even then he never really seems to be screaming along. I gave him five out of ten for a very unglamorous glide and slide in Brisbane he's getting four out of ten for this one but at least he's not run out and gets down on the pads and if he doesn't doesn't slide evenly on the pads he's rolling uncomfortably everywhere the umpire of course yeah, I've, I've got to say that I mean, it's just such a stupid thing to do he comes down on his knees and he can't that way he can't really stretch so if it really did get close, it'll be all over for him because he hasn't, uh, he's not really stretching out. I mean, if you're going to dive, you may as well get, uh, get your arms way ahead of uh, yourself, your body. But that was, um, yeah, he's done that twice now. Not very elegant at all when it comes to trying to make his ground. Look, he goes down there now. Had he just really leant forward with his body, it'd have been way past the stumps eventually ends up in that stretched position but <laughs> far too late oh it's great to watch not only his stroke play but his desperation he is that keen and that hungry for runs Just uh, looking at the bowling figures, uh, Gillespie still got three, Lee a further four. Two hundred up, eleven point two overs to go. So it's a great total brewing. Australian know they've got some batting to do, but they can't be thinking about the batting yet because this twelve overs is going to be vital. They can't get slack in this position catches have got to create half chances run outs are on they've got to take them and the captain on his toes well good shot again this is going to go for four that's a very well timed back foot drive just a little bit short again and wonderfully struck through the covers he's injured laxman is now injured that's the knee that when he did that dive the pad went down and he plugged with his the point of his knee not on the pad so brilliant power how do you get so much power into a ball which is cramping you for room and then beat the sweeper which is andy simons his placement is perfect simons could get to do nothing whip that one away on the leg side but yeah he's limping now 
and a three for 205. Two hundred and five they've got now, and the run rate's still on five and a quarter per over. Well, this is uh, flicked up in the air. He's lucky. I suppose if you're going to play those little whippy shots every now and the, again, the ball just holds up a little bit, and uh, it's likely you'll get a, the odd front edge. Very safe. You can see the wrist worked. And that's why it carried the man. Big edges on the bats these days. Miss hits are travelling a lot further than they used to. Some of these fellas can miss hit sixes. I said no. Laxman's wagon wheel showed he's a bit light on through the covers. How do you, Australia have got to work out a way they can get him playing through the covers. He's not as comfortable doing that. He can cut, he can whip, he can drive off the back foot. But they've got to get him on the front foot. Zimbabwe, I think in Brisbane it was. Irvin got him playing one, but it had to be pretty wide. It was pretty wide. Look at it, it's nearly out on the white lines. Somehow Australia have got to start getting him playing in areas that he's not as comfortable with. Oh, you're right, that's the area. He's, um, if you can get him forward. Oh, he just loves it there. Just loves it there. That's money for old rope as far as he's concerned. I tell you, the Australian fielding's been very good today. But it's had very little impact, hasn't it? it they, they, haven't, they haven't been able to cut many runs down or balls from going to the boundary because the placement's been so good. They've done nothing wrong but they're staring down a 300 total. Well, that was an attempt at a Yorker, that is beautifully flicked away. That's going to go for four as well, is it? No, well fielded. Bickle down there moved very well. Only just got to it. This is an extraordinary shot. Brett Lee's done nothing wrong. He's bowling at a swinging Yorker right at the feet. Both feet move quickly. Singh gets the bat on it into the gap and has the fielder doing this. Fast, well-pitched Yorker. And the fieldsmen are under pressure. Give me a break. That's a bit of length. Yes, well, um, Patel opened the batting with Ganguly today, and uh, of course uh, Ganguly was out really early on. Patel played pretty well for his 28 of uh, 33 deliveries, and Laxman has been uh, the man who's done it since then with Yuvraj. So this is a useful partnership they've put together, 130, and they've created a wonderful launching pad. Uh, the last 10 overs which begins after this ball could be very entertaining tactically Australia aren't to my liking with this round the wicket bowling to Uvrush and I think Brett Lee's e even though it might have been worth a try for a little while a little while it hasn't worked and no one's got in his ear and said maybe you could come back over the wicket I think over the wicket's going to work better but no one's uh, been helping him and suggesting it Six off that one, it's three for 210. Mm -hmm. 
Gavaska Badani, the two batsmen to come, then uh, the bowlers after that. Good to see Ajit Agarka back in the side. So Bickle given the responsibility now to see if he can get a wicket here. That uh, is really what they want. That'll slow India down a little bit. Now he's coming around the wicket as well to Yuvra Singh. So his angle is going to be into the left-hander. So they're, they're pretty worried, I'd reckon, about going across him and creating some angle across the left-hander. They must value his strengths or rate his strength behind point and through the covers very highly. Hopefully they haven't forgotten about his strength through and over the top of mid-wicket. Yes, it's obviously a plan. If you, um, It's one thing seeing one bowler do it, but uh, Bickle here straight away adopting that tactic. When in the normal course of events, he'd love to bowl over the wicket to left-handers because he'd get a lot of LBWs. All you've got to do is straighten it down the line or swing it a little bit, which he does. Well, that's in the air and going uh, away down on the offside. Back they come. Well, he's going to get it over the top of that offside field no matter what. Well, exactly. He can play. This is what they're worried about. He hangs it out there outside off stump. Uvraj gets underneath it. Big gap over the top of cover there because the sweeping man, Michael Bevan, is no, Simon Caddix, is fairly square. It's a good shot. You just need to monitor these tactics. Don't be stuck in one tactic for too long if it's not working. Just short. Just short. That's the second time that's happened this afternoon. Damien Martin was the other catcher that caught one on the half volley. Wouldn't this have been nice? Really full-blooded cover drive, but mistimed for once. Nothing much going to the liking of Ricky Ponting. Oh, he's blasted that one through the offside. That's four. The ball from round the wicket is coming right onto the meat of the bat. Speak to any left-hander and they'll tell you they prefer it from that side. Entertainment plus. If they're going to be this full for the lefty too, the man, Simon Kaddish, who's out on the boundary, needs to be straighter. He's very square, but you only need to be square for a shorter ball. A cut shot. If he's going to be on the front foot driving, they can move Kaddish five or ten metres straighter. Running for everything and a shy at the stumps. Oh, and that's got to be close. That's got to be close. Surely he's going to have to ask the question there. I think so. Right, there we go. A direct hit, and uh, it's always close. Ponting's throw on the move, onto the stumps. Well and truly safe. But really good fielding. Move well to his right, and it's great running between wickets by the Indians. Ponting's been pushed back because of such powerful cover driving, and now they pinch a single on him. Yes, their running's been good, and uh, there's absolutely no doubt that cheer there from all the Indians on the ground as the no doubt goes up. Oh, they're having a lot of fun out there. Well, how early did they buy their tickets? The Indian people. There's more Indians here at the SCG today than Australians. And they are rowdy, raucous and passionate. They're being really well entertained and enthused by such great stroke play as well. On the front foot, 9.2 overs to go. They're already 218. Yes, the history book says that uh, anything in excess of 260 is too many. I think Yuvraj is going to be the one that could be really dangerous here. He's uh, catching up with Laxman, 82 or 91. If he gets to his 100 and then starts to cut loose, anything could happen because he's strong. This pitch is pretty good. The fast, the outfield is lightning fast. It 
It's the end of the over. Three for 220. So three down for 220, nine overs to go, and uh, Brett Lee is going to continue. Brett Lee has already bowled seven overs, so he's got three to go. To tell you more about it now, Bill Laurie, and with him is Mark Taylor. Thank you, Tony Gregg. The punt ships 140 off 154 balls. And they're batting superbly. They've forced the Australians back on the line. They're taking short singles. This left and right-handed combination once again showing the strength of the Indian batting lineup without Saywag and Tendulkar today in Australia were, had them at 3 for 80 all of a sudden they're 3 for 221 in the 42nd over and they're looking at 283 from here on in if they get 7 runs per over I think 283 is a minimum Bill the other thing that needs to be said is that really it's, it's just been good batting I don't think Australia have bowled that badly they haven't fielded badly I haven't fielded badly. Maybe it's the ball. Brett Lee's thrown the ball back to the umpires. Who, uh, and actually, if they're going to call for a new one, I think it's getting a bit hard to see. Well, the Indians haven't found it too hard to see in recent times. It's been disappearing to all parts of the SCG. So, haven't had a problem with it over the last 41.1 overs. Uh, it's just been fantastic batting from Laxman and Yuvraj Singh. As I said, I don't think the bowling's been bad. I think particularly the uh, the quicker men, Gillespie and Lee, have done a pretty good job. But uh, very few people have been spared. Well, I've seen it with Saywag. We've seen it with Ganguly, Tenduka. Drav has had a great summer. And all of a sudden, uh, Yurad Singh's joined Waxman. And the left and right hand of combinations working beautifully for India. They're testing all the bowlers. They chased 288 at the MCG. They scored 270 when they lost 6 for 13 in the final overs. 303 at the Gabba. And here on the Sydney Cricket Ground, in the 42nd over, they're 3 for 228. 21. This young man on screen, he's a cracker. He's got all the shots. It's beautiful time of the ball. One or two sweep shots he played off Simons with James. There's one there. That's a beautifully played sweep. Then he goes finer. Very hard to bowl to. There he goes again, square. I say earlier, Bill, the thing that's impressed me about the Indians is that is the way they've put away the loose ball, but even sometimes the not so loose ball. They've turned good deliveries into bad ones and hit them for four. They, they haven't let the Australian bowlers off at all. Brett Lee, new ball. And just pushed Langman on, Waxman on 89, Uraj on 84, so there's a chance of 200s here. Plenty of overs left. But they don't want to slow down. It's, it's a good batting pitch, and the outfield is lightning fast. Well, VVS Laxman made 100 against Australia in their last outing. 103, which not out. He brought up his 100 off the last ball of the innings up at the Gabba. Drive doesn't beat cover. And he's got a a wonderful opportunity to make it four one day hundreds in his career but also four against australia he doesn't have a one day international 100 against any other country bar australia and uh you'd reckon that uh there'd be a lot of players out there who'd have a few one day hundreds but don't have one against the australians who over the last five or six years have been considered the best one day side in the world Nicely played, this time it's wider Simon's, just a single. Simon's saving a lot of runs because of his strong arm and his quickness across the grass. They won't take him on. He's very, very deep, that's a long boundary. Just a wonderful athlete. Yeah, that's sensible from Ricky Ponting. Got him out there at fielding in front of the uh, Barongal stand, or sometimes he moves a bit straighter in front of the lady member stand. That is a, a massive boundary out there. 
but certainly the longest on the ground and that's where you need your men with the strong arms. It's nice he plays into the gap, he'll get at least two. He's working the ball beautifully off his pads and finding the gaps against pace and spin. Well, that's what I was saying earlier about the bowling. I don't necessarily think the Australians have bowled that badly. Once again, this is not a bad ball. It's full. It's angling towards the stumps. It's actually about off stump. Yuvraj Singh's used his wrists and got it behind square. There's a man at fine leg and there's a man at deep square leg. He's got it right in the middle of the two of them and got two. Four from the over. Good one from Lee. It's three for 224. Well, you're obviously with Linter Energy. Yeah, of course. Especially with their great energy deal. Shall we test them out? Oh, turn it off, mate. Join over one million Australians. Switch to Linter Energy, supporting your home team. That's a sellout. Great value for money as well for our viewers around the world. Run rate's 5.33. Eight overs to be bowled. Seven wickets in hand, India. That's probably the key here. Waxman on 90. Uraj on 86. Some tour groups here. Groups from India. We're also touring groups around Australia who are regular visitors at all these one man internationals and a profile on the cricket show towards the uh, end of the test match series about the fanatics who are a group that follow Australian sport ask the question Empire. Daryl Harper had a bit of a look it wasn't much a real big shout very tough bowling around the wicket you get an LBW pitching wear on the stumps, but not straight anywhere near enough, and a big inside edge as well. And that gives you an idea of how desperate the Australians are getting, their bowls are getting. You don't often see a bowl up of Andy Bickle's pace bowling around the wicket in the last 10 overs of a one day international. Generally, you're trying to angle the ball into the stumps to keep it tight. Andrew Bickle's trying something new here. Hasn't quite got it, but picks up a single. Well, it's good thinking from Bickle. I don't mind it when you're going for plenty of runs and the run rate's currently at 5.31 and over the last 10 overs it's probably been about six why not try something different the tried and true certainly isn't working against these two try something different good thinking from Bickle conceding 6.2 runs per over Andy Bickle is his eighth over into the gap pick up another single they've only hit uh, 13 boundaries between them in this partnership 145 they've placed the ball beautifully they've run hard between the wickets yes well vvs laxman who is now into the 90s 91 from 112 balls faced he only has four boundaries to his name but uh, there hasn't been that many balls he hasn't scored off it just works the ball so nicely. Talking of uh, working the ball, I think Andrew Bickle's going to try and... Well, I thought he was going to work it over the fence. He could be bothered going that far. I'll just jump on it. Not when you're going at six runs and over. You're going to take it out on somebody. <laughs> That's one go. Well, Andrew Bickle's tactics seem to be go round the wicket and predominantly bowl short. He's trying to tempt Laxman into a hook shot. Now, there's two men. Now, they're about, oh, well, just in front of square leg and one just behind square leg. Now, there's no one down there at deep fine leg, so there's no one down in that area. So there's a danger of going for some runs there. But if there's a skied hook shot in this area, there's two men out there looking for it. He's gone for it on the ground 
not getting boundaries here. This is good bowling by Wee and Bickle. His last two or three overs, just containing the batsman. Well, there, those two fieldsmen are in position for Laxman on the hook. Now they're going to stay in approximately the same positions for the left-hander. The man at the bottom of the screen is now deep third man, and the man to his left is at deep point. Four from the over, that's a good one from Bickle. Three for 228. Doesn't matter where you're from, you're getting great entertainment here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Seven overs to be bowled. 148 run partnership, but the Australian bowls have just pegged back the run rate slightly. It's 5.3 now. And it's Gillespie. He's got a three to bowl. Goes from Gillespie. He was very stiff in the outfield. Got to come up cold and try and pick up a wicket or two. He has the best of the figures so far in terms of runs per over conceded, Gillespie. One for 31. His runs per over about 4.4. So that's the best of the Australians. Now he has three overs left, so he'll bowl overs 44, 46 and 48 from the uh, northern end of the ground. Still leaves one over to be bowled from this end. Oh, I think Ricky Ponting desperately wants wickets here. Young Gavaskar in, Badani in. Haven't made a lot of runs so far on the tour. To try and remove Waxman. Well, you, Raj, who's both played beautifully. Well, the one advantage Ricky Ponning has is he's got Laxman who's on 92 and Yuvraj Singh's on 88. Now, they're both in the back of their mind will have thoughts of making 100 here. They may just slightly change their game when they get into the 90s. So, Ponting and the Australians will be trying as much as they can to keep them in the 90s. Once they get to 100, they'll be swinging at everything. It's a single down to long off. That's OK. Well, seven overs left. The run a ball from here on in gives India 270 which is about, I think, probably about a 50-50 score. It's a pretty good pitch, and the outfield is extremely quick. I still reckon they're a chance of making 280, 290. But they really have to go from here on in. Put that away to the deep, just the single on the bounce. And actually, no ball call too from square leg. Only three men inside the circle. Umpire Darrell Harper's picked it up. He's walking into shot, just making sure that he's seen by the scorers. Well, that's the way it goes. It would have been worse if it carried to Simons in the deep. Well, the mid-on was the problem. The mid-on went back for that delivery for VVS Laxman. And uh, generally, Ricky Ponting has kept mid-on and mid-off up for Laxman. Now, Yuvraz Singh's on strike. They've both gone back. But that wasn't supposed to be the case for Laxman. Raj Singh really is a danger man. He's the hitter of this partnership. He's hit nine boundaries. He's on 89. Waxman's on 93. Just the one international hundred. 
so far. Crack. Oh, how good's that? It was short and he rocked onto the back foot and played the perfect pull shot. He's into the 90s. It's 93, same as VVS Laxman now. He slowly but surely caught him. Scored his runs quicker with shots like this. Boundary number 10 for you, Brash Singh. Lovely looking player. He's had a lot of the strike. There's only 15 balls difference that they've faced. 15 more to Waxman, but he picked it up so beautifully. It didn't bounce that high either. He stayed still, put it straight to the carpet. It's gone again. This time straight to the fieldsman. Misfield, but he won't concede a run. Two lovely shots, really. The one that went for four was a lovely piece of control. The ball didn't bounce as much as he thought. The second one was quicker from Gillespie. And also, once again, try to hit the ball too hard. We're up, worried him slightly, because just for a moment, like he might have taken his eye off the ball. Swiveled nicely and kept the ball down. Rolled the wrist, kept the ball down. Well, that could have well been a wide down the leg side then. It certainly wasn't no way with the height. Why wouldn't you call that a wide? They normally call them when it goes in the leg side. It was probably because it was still in line with the body, I'd say. It was a close call, Steve Buckner, though, with Gillespie bowling around the wicket, he's angling the ball across Laxman, more so than down the leg side. No. Over the bowl, three for 236. Tremendous atmosphere here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Partnership of 156, both men in the 90s. Good strike rates. One striking at 93. Waxman striking at 79. Crash. Oh, misfield. Four runs. Got past a man at backward point. Maybe a bit hard on him, but went through his hands. He's gone to 98. Michael Clark's the man. Australia can ill afford this at this stage. Yuvraj Singh is on 94, was on 94 prior to that. He now goes to 98. Just needs two for the 100. I mentioned that the Australians will be keen to try and keep the Indians away from 100 for as long as they possibly can. He's home, well run, goes to 99. Well, there's nothing wrong with his bat, Yuvra Singh. It was in the change of uh, over. Yuvra Singh was, he was gesturing to uh, Steve Buckman, the umpire, about maybe changing his bat. And Steve Buckman sort of said to him, mate, the bowl is ready, go and face. Now, the first two balls of this over, he's cracked one for four, and the next one he's hit a single off, so he can't be that bad. I still think the batsman's entitled to change his bat, to be honest. The label's coming off. If it gets a little nick off the label, as it's fluttering in the air, he won't be too happy. He's on 99. At the moment, it's Waxman on 93. It's Bickle. Bouncer. Not hooking. Not sure why he's not hooking at this stage. 45th over. Well, that's the one short ball that Andrew Bickle well, should be allowed this over with the uh, change of the laws of one-day cricket. Bowlers are allowed one short ball. But uh, one of the reasons that Laxman's probably not hooking is he knows that that's all he can bowl. 
Another bouncer now should be a no ball. It's gone for it. Down to Gillespie, just the single. Gerard Singh on 99 of 103 deliveries with 11 boundaries. Listen to the Indians in the crowd, and they're here in their thousands. And the Indian batsmen without Tendulka and Seawake haven't let them down. Racing on 99 and Andrew Bickle just slowing things down. It's got the, uh, the crowd all excited and waiting for their for one of their Indian champions to get his hundred. I don't think it'll make any difference. And there it is, a miss hit inside edge, and it's gonna race away, possibly for four. It does his first hundred against Australia, his second, but what a good one! What a good young player he is. Fantastic moment for Yuvra Singh. Beautiful looking player. It's only his second one day hundred. The other one was scored against Bangladesh last April. I'm sure he will treasure this one as his best innings in one day cricket. It's only his second one day hundred, as I mentioned, but I'm telling you right now, it certainly won't be his last. He comes to the crease at three for 80, now it's three for 246. He's scoring at a runner ball with 12 boundaries. He's 22 years of age. A very gifted young man. Cop that, he says. That's up to mid wicket where Simons have cut it off. 11 off the over. Good one for India. Three for 247. Five overs to be bowled. This wonderful stadium is full and they're buzzing. A wonderful partnership. 167 of almost a runner ball. Mirage sings on strike to Jason Gillespie. Crack out to Simons, who's very, very deep. Just the single. He is deep. Billy really needs to be that went like a rocket to Andrew Simons. Puts Laxman on strike. Well, Yuvraj Singh is 104. He now has his highest score. VVS Laxman, 103 not out is his highest score, made against Australia at the Gabba only a few nights ago. He'll have that in sights. Five overs left. Going for the pull shot, doesn't get it away. And dot ball. You are seeing what joy for him. Second one day hundred against the best side in the world in recent years in one day cricket. Little inside edge, a bit of luck there, but he doesn't mind. It's four. Not pretty happy too. Yeah. Not easy to dominate a partnership with BBS Laxman in it. And that's exactly what he's done. Brilliant one by him. Flaxman nicely out to long leg for a single. A typical Indian type player, as you've ever seen. Risty, likes to work the ball on the onside, but not that many balls hit in the air. And hit 12 fours in total. Only that one over sort of backward or over mid wicket, should I say, was a lofted shot. Most of the balls. Get along the ground, a beautiful timing. Miss hit. Well, oh, ball by Gillespie didn't give him too much width. If both these are here, it could be 280. If 
four overs to go. Waxman on 95. Gangilwe out for one, Patel 28, Dravid 12, and it was three for 80. Well, at six o'clock local time, this innings is supposed to conclude at 6.04 with the rescheduling after the rain delay. It's in the air, there she goes. Here comes Simons. No, doesn't get there. I'm not sure that it's gone over. It's a big hit. That's the longest boundary, and he's gone over cover. The crowd's saying four, but you wouldn't believe them in Sydney. We'll wait for the third umpire. They go easy, Bill. This New South Welsh would leave Steve Buckner astray. This is just inside the rope. Look at that. The crowd's got it exactly right. About a oh, third of a metre inside the rope. I tell you what, that is a big hit. It's only a, a four, but that's over cover off Gillespie. This time he pulls it away. Bickle does well. A pick up two. 46 gone. A sweep of 255. India winning the toss and batting. Four overs to be bowled at three for 255. We're seeing a wonderful batting exhibition by Niraj Singh and Waxman. Waxman on 95. And I see in Harvey coming into the attack from the Rand again hit. He's bowling to VVS Waxman. Very, very special Waxman. That's what they're calling him, and rightly so. How do you feel here as a bowler, Bill? Throwing the ball, you got one batsman on 111 off 109 deliveries, and you got VVS Laxman at the other end, who's probably played as well as anyone throughout this summer on 95. Four overs left. Harvey's going to bowl two of them. Well, Laxman doesn't tear you apart, does he? He's only hit the four fours, 49 singles, nine twos. It's been his coolness. He's in control. Ian Harvey. Chips it down to long on for a single. That's a good move because you give it to Mirad Singh, who's really starting to belt them all over the park. Laxman to 96, just a boundary away. Mirad Singh, what a great day it's been for him already. It's two one day hundreds now. One against one of the minnows in Bangladesh last year, and now one against the might of Australia against the Wales. He's really uh, looked at his uh, standard, hasn't he? Superb young player, brilliant fieldsman. India on the move in world cricket, there's no doubt about that. How is that? Mr. Soil delivery. A change of pace that took the over spinner, I suppose you call it, out of the back of the hand for me and Harvey. But a couple of different slower balls. He bowls an off spinner as well, and then he'll fire in the odd Yorker. We'll have to vary his pace quite a bit in these dying overs. Where's it gone? It's gone out of the ground. Has it's a big one? No, it bounces inside the rope. He's on fire. Almost impossible to bowl to him. He's Played the sweep shot beautifully, he's hit through the covers. This time he goes over mid-wicket. Once against the placement though, it's not an out-and-out -out slog. He knows that's where the gap is, over the man at mid-wicket. Miss hit this time, no run. Definitely picking out areas where he knows he can hit the boundary, Yuvraj Singh. Generally they're over the men on the edge of the circle. 
the men on the circle are all right on the circle at the moment. They're just trying to stop a boundary. They're not even trying to stop a single anymore. You can get a ball over their head and get a boundary yourself. Down the ground. Just the single. Brings Waxman on strike. He's on 96. Oh, it's a, a lovely paced partnership, this one. Started out with Laxman as really the aggressor. He was the one who was set when uh, Yuvraj Singh came to the crease. But as Singh has, got, has grown in confidence, he's been the one to play the bigger shots. And, Yuv and Laxman at the other end has just pushed the ball around. But now finds himself only four away from 100 himself. Very good cricket, over gone, 47, 3 for Yuvraj Singh's 116 and Laxman is 98. Now, for our viewers who are scheduled to be watching the National Nine News and a current affair at the moment, they're all going to stay with us until VVS Laxman, well, one of either two things, gets his 100 or gets out. And uh, at the moment, it'd be, a, it'd be a bit of a punt to bet he's going to get out. He looks a million dollars. 98 not out at the moment. He's at the non striker's end. Yuvraj Singh just getting a well earned drink. Three overs to go. Now, Australia should have bowled their overs by this stage. 6.04 was the scheduled time for this innings to finish. So the Australians have been slow with their over rates, mainly because we had a change of ball and a change of bat. We also had lots of boundaries. Dot ball. Went like a rocket to short cover. Damien Martin. Three men inside the circle, backward point, point, and a cover. Run rate's 5.59. And that brings Laxman on strike. The Indian crowd are having, are having a great day, aren't they? They've come along to watch their side continue a good summer, and that's exactly what they've done so far. We've seen Yuvraj Singh make 100, and now they're hoping that uh, VVS Laxman is going to score another one here at the SCG. If he gets it, it'll be his fourth one at the National, all against Australia. And two in the series. Plenty of cricket left in the summer. The last be around the wicket. Oh, there was an opportunity to wig wide. Wide, not called. Opportunity missed. My word, that must have been close to leg stump. He went a long way across here, VVS Laxman. That was the reason that uh, Steve Buckner didn't signal a wide. It was an off spinner. Ooh, about, uh, what, two centimetres? This time he misses the full shot. Well, nice changing of the pace from Gillespie. The one that just missed the leg stump was an off spinner. He ran about 120 k's. That last delivery was a lot quicker, 141.4 k's. It's just the change in pace that's making it hard for Laxman. Just one run off this over two. It's a good one for Australia. Must be his final over. It's one. Maxman goes to 99. He looks a little bit nervous. I don't know why he's in such good form. An interesting leg side field for Yuvraj Singh when he's on strike. 
finally comes up inside the circle. He's the man saving a single. And then there's three men all in front of square leg. There's a deep square or a deep forward square leg, a deep mid wicket and a deep mid on. And no one inside the circle saving the single. Quite an unusual and unorthodox leg side field. Just two from the over so far though from Gillespie. Three from the over. 48 gone, three for 266. Scorecard 118 for Uvraj and 99 for Laxman. And Laxman once again at the non strikers end. And just a reminder to our viewers who thought they were going to be watching the National on 9 News at the moment, we'll go to the news when Laxman makes a single or gets out. He's on 99, he's not on strike though. And I dare say it'll happen this over one way or the other. Two overs left. Out to Simons. Just the single, so here's his chance. VVS Waxman on 99. Well, Waxman on 99. 103 not out against Australia at the Gabba. Only about four days ago. His highest one day score. A chance to score back to back hundreds against Australia. Extra man coming inside the circle at mid-on. Harvey the bowler. There it is, well played. He is a fine cricketer. Previous Laxman, another 100 to add to his 103 at the Gabba. It's now time to say goodbye to our New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmanian viewers who leave us for the news. See you back here in about an hour for the Australian run chase. We should see some big hitting in the 49th over. Two batsmen who have put on a partnership of 188. Uraj on strike to Harvey. Bang! High ball! Getting under it is he? It's the long boundary. It's going, it's going, it's gone! What a good hit. That's a big hit. That's 85 metres. He got hold of that. It was just a fraction short. You can hear the bat. Ian Chappell said earlier, it's a wonderful piece of willow. That's the one who wanted to change, Bill. Why would you want to change that? He's hit that about 95 to 100 metres. It's not just cleared the rope, it's cleared the fence and about three or four rows back. Longest boundary at the ground. It's gone over cover. That's a beautiful stroke. Controlled hitting. Four more. That's beautiful batting. He goes over mid wicket. Then he gently goes over cover with a lot to drive. And the crowd should be excited. I don't think it gets any better. One day cricket entertainment. This is outstanding from Yuvraj Singh. The six to start. And then inside out over cover. Full toss as well, low full toss. Not easy to play that shot against that sort of delivery. Sweeps, four more. He's on fire. He's played some superb sweep shots off the spinner. This time it's a medium pacer. One, one, six, four, four. Three boundaries. All hit to different parts of the SCG. One over mid wicket, one over extra cover. And one now sweep over a short fine leg. Gone again, down again. This could be six more. It's going and going. It's gone. What an over for India. 
What batting. 22 off the over. Three for 288 after 49. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding from you, Brad Singh. Six, four, four, six to finish the Ian Harvey over, who is regarded around the world as one of the finest bowlers at the death in one day cricket. It's now the highest individual score at this ground in a one-day international. Yuvraj Singh has raced to 139 from 121 balls. That was the first six. Then the four over extra cover. Then the fine sweep from the slower ball. And then, bang, straight back over the bowler's head into the side screen. 16 fours and two sixes. And that's as good as you'll see anyone hit the ball. Striking at 114. Nothing wrong with the bowling, just superb batting. It's Brett Lee to bowl out, and he's lucky. He's bowling to Waxman. Waxman on 100. Urad Singh on 139. Interesting statement, Bill. Lucky he's bowling to Laxman. That's how well Urad Singh is playing. Laxman is having a superb summer. He's already scored two test match hundreds here, four years apart. He now has a one-day 100. He's making hundreds against Australia a regular feature of his game. And now you're saying Brett Lee's lucky he's bowling to him. I reckon he'll work a single. Give it to the main striker. And he doesn't have to. He lofts it over cover. I'll take it back, BVS. He's only hit five boundaries. That's his fifth, and what a good one. Come on, Billy was never going to work a single. BVS Lexman's just saying to you, Brad Singh, all right, you've been the star today, but hey, that's not too bad from the old timer. Well, they scored 303 at the gap up. Now they're 292 in the final over for three. They're not losing wickets in tests all one day. As... Full pitch, a single. Well, no respite at all for the Australian bowlers. I repeat what I said earlier, I don't think Australia have bowled that badly. I really think we're just seeing some of the best one day batting you could possibly wish to see from these two. They took their time, they've built it up, and now at the end they are cashing in. Three for 80, this is just a wonderful partnership. It's, it's 213 off 205 deliveries, the partnership. The VB series is on fire, and Indian batting is absolutely superb. What a final series it will be. If you haven't bought a ticket, buy one now. Superb batting. Good conditions. Congratulations to Tommy Parker. He's given them the conditions, and they haven't let him down. 2004, great year for Indian batting against number one side. Got him, got through him. Knocks him over. The one of the best one day innings you will ever see. And VBS Laxman, the non striker, straight over to tap Yuvraj Singh on the back. That is a fine innings. It ends with a good delivery from Brett Lee. It's full, angling in, and straight, hits middle stump. Good bowling, but what a wonderful innings that has been. And, uh, people up on their feet here at the SCG. The highest score by an individual at this ground in a one day international. Yuvraj Singh departs for 139 and 122 balls faced. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yes, we've seen Lara make that 277 in the test match. This young man of 22 years of age has shown a touch of class. Standing ovation from full house. A wonderful moment for him and Indian cricket. Certainly was, sir. Well done. <laughs> Spare a thought for young Rowan Gaviscar, who's just made his way out to the middle. He's got three deliveries left to face. He'll be hoping only has to face one. He's on strike to uh, Brett Lee. And all he can do is try and get some bat on ball and get off strike. And he's got two for 43 and 8.3 overs. 
this crowd is just buzzing. We've seen a wonderful batting exhibition by India. Lee. Gets a single. Gets Laxman on strike. Well, I think the wicket of uh, Yuvraj Singh typifies what we've been saying about the Australian bowling. It hasn't been that bad. All you can do, really, in these last few overs when the batsman hitting you all over the place is keep it full and keep it straight. That's exactly what Brett Lee did. Got it on middle stump, maybe a little inside edge as well. And Yuvraj Singh could not on this occasion work the magic that he's worked for the last couple of hours he's done his job it's 294 for four with two balls remaining Waxman on strike where will we go this time he goes straight down to long off through for one that's all they'll get Waxman was looking for two almost out he just got back he just got back He's laughing too. He's got a bit of a sore knee. It's his highest score. Laxman, 105. Wasn't far away here, VVS Laxman. Let's have a look at this. Bales are off there. I think you're going to find he's just out there. VVS Laxman's probably not going to make any difference, to be totally honest. She's at the non strikers in. There's only one delivery left. So, unless it's a no ball or a wide, and. They take a run off it. Kavaska will face the last ball anyway, so from that point of view, it's not going to make a lot of difference, although VVS Laxman technically should have been out. Full pitch. It's gone out to deep cover, just a single, so after 50 overs, nice stuff, Roy. India are four for 296. Previous Laxman 106 not out. India 4 for 296, so Australia will need 297 later this evening at a run rate of 5.94. We look forward to your company when you see the run chase. For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. <laughs> Should have gone to Specsavers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Well, you're obviously with Alinta Energy. Yeah, of course. Especially with their great energy deal. Shall we test them out? Oh, turn it off, mate. Join over one million Australians. Switch to Alinta Energy, supporting your home team. Well, that's the scene here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's. Uh... but an absolutely packed house here to watch these two fabulous cricket teams. Now the Australians have got their work cut out here because India have done very well. 296 is a good score at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Good score historically because no team has won batting second and scored more than 260. So that gives you some idea. Mind you, records are made to be broken. Have a look at that. Laxman, 106 not out. A very good innings. He was the sort of uh, the anchor man out there, and uh, Yuvraj Singh played a superb innings, 139. He really was very aggressive. So that what that's what Australia are now confronted with. It was uh, an exhilarating partnership between uh, Yuvraj Singh and Laxman. Now, 
now the uh, two players going out there a different pairing Hayden's not there Gilchrist is and so is Karic into the limited overside and uh, that's a nice little ask for him go out and face up go in with another left hander who's uh, made almost 200 in the match just recently and see if you can knock off a target of 297 well he played in uh, he's played in one other um, one day at the national that is against some Bob he didn't get a bat there so this will be a big moment for him Adam Gilchrist of course uh, has played brilliantly over the years for Australia in this number one position and uh, they'll be hoping he gets off to a, a good start today but uh, what a nice place to um, to well, to open the batting I suppose uh, right here at the Sydney Greer ground in front of a packed house uh, it happens to be in the New South Wales side and by the way we've seen him play superbly this season going way back to the matches uh, in the ING Cup where he opened the batting and uh, really did play well in that role right so Ajid Agaka has got the ball and as will always be the case when he first starts he gets the ball to swing a little bit and uh, that's what these two left handers left to be a little careful of the ball swinging back into their pads and trapping them LBW that uh, tends to be what outswingers um, go for in swingers of course the left hander so here we go the Australian innings about to get underway two things will be happening out there at the moment one that uh, Gilchrist and Kadic and the other batsmen will be concentrating we've got to concentrate on uh, getting the run rate moving but don't lose wickets that's two matches now where India have played quite superbly had wickets in hand and have been up around the 300 mark and there's four for a start very nice way to start too pitched up on off stump and uh, we know Gilchrist he doesn't need uh, more than one invitation to have uh, a bit of a go played the first ball straight back down the pitch and then got this one slightly wide and uh, oh boy got stuck into that and the second thing will be that uh, Agurka will be trying to get the ball in round about that same spot the previous delivery but swing it back in they reckon that's good Chris weakness they'll try to start it outside off stump and swing it in to hit middle and off well, he's made a lot of runs against people who think that's his weakness but, uh, that's what the Indians reckon Right now, it's over to Simon Katic. This will be, um, oh, I suspect it'll be a little tense for him. He'll be hoping to get off to a good start. All he's got to do is play the way he's played all season. Always looks uh, pretty calm to me, Simon Katic. That's um, a rundown of uh, what he did in the ING, what he's done in the ING Cup so far this season. There's the 136 I was talking about at Barrel right at the beginning of the season. Made the 118 in Hobart. So he's had a good time of it and he's been very aggressive at the top end of the New South Wales order. So Kadich is away. It's the last match between Australia and India was uh, the match in which Australia just couldn't quite get there India made a big score just over 300 and uh, Australia got to within 19 in a run chase on that occasion and that time uh, Hayden made 109 good for his 21 if you're gonna win this match someone's gonna have to score 100 oh there's a bit of bounce there the end of the first over no wicket for six
No wicket for six. That's the lineup. Ponting at three. Martin, Simons, Bevan, Clark, Harvey. Good batting lineup. This Australian side has got. All they've got to do is get it right, and they'll be right up there. This could be a very good game of cricket. Right. Well, we know that uh, the Indian bowlers have done very well. Ifan Patan has um, swung the ball back quite a bit. That's to the right hand, in fact, to the left hand, as he'd be going away towards the slip cordon. We've just got two slips in position. There's no deepish gully there. For these two guys, I would have thought someone just behind square quite deep uh, would be a good position. A little bit of swing there for a start. Uh, with Karic, you have this uh, characteristic foot movement where he starts off outside leg stump and then uh, just shuffles across until he's covering his stumps. It's a habit, it's a natural style he has. Yes, he wants to, uh, well, hopefully it would have been done already. He wants to get some really good close-up shots of his footwork while he's batting well, so that uh, if Ever he has a bit of a bad run, he can go back to that uh, videotape and have a little look at uh, how nicely those feet were moving. Or how they were moving when he was playing well, I suppose. It's probably a better way of putting it. He's on strike at the moment. It was uh, the limited overs games where he did well that got him into the test matches. And the fact that he bowled left arm spin came in here the test against uh, Zimbabwe. Then 52, 16, 75, 31, 29, 77 not out, and 125. It's uh, quite a good test match start. Good running. He had a move, but uh, he set off very quickly. It wasn't a bad delivery either. It seemed to me that uh, one just nipped back a little bit and Katic was quick enough to get his back down and get it away into the gap on the onside. Murali Kartik. We'll see him bowl his left arm orthodox spinners later this evening. back a little bit but he's uh, lucky he's managed to get an inside edge on it and it's gone flying away to find leg for four so uh, Gilchrist getting the first boundary away it wasn't the swing that did him here it was movement off the seam the seam was beautifully upright and it's come back at him from outside off stump it's very well bowled just uh, a touch lucky it's what you need when you're chasing 297 to win Welcome back to our Adelaide viewers. Yep. Played away on the onside for a single, six runs off that over. That takes the score to no wicket for 12. And uh, the openers, the Australian openers, Gilchrist and Katic. Hayden's not playing in this match for the benefit of uh, those of you who've just joined us from Adelaide. The Australian team here chasing. Well, they're chasing a big score, 296 made by the Indians, and at the moment, there are no wicket for 12. So 285 to get, and plenty of batting there. That's a strong batting lineup. Despite the fact that Hayden at the top there is uh, not playing, he's uh, apparently resting a knee, which has been irritating him a little bit.
Oh, and that, that smashed through the offside for four. Good Christ. Really getting stuck into that one. That's the second one he's hit in that direction. This was a better shot. Was more beautifully timed. Almost down on one knee. Ball too many outside that off stump. Long off follies out there. Gilchrist absolutely thrives on those. Having said that, I suppose he could always nick one, and that's uh, always a possibility. Left handers are confronted with this angle when right handers are bowling to them. The ball goes right across the face of the bat, and there's a slip in position. They've now moved a man in dead square on the offside. Close and square. They've got uh, one man at slip, and the man Tony Gregg's talking about at uh, square point. Got to be uh, some little white dots there, and he has to be inside those dots so that he's classed as uh, a close-in catching person. Could be at second slip, or he could be where he is, or he could be at leg slip, anywhere at all, as long as he's within that scope. Dead straight down the ground. Lovely shot again. Well, are we going to be entertained to one of those little uh, Gilchrist classics? All fours to him so far. Interesting that uh, he's been given a couple of games off and Brad Haddon's coming into the side after tonight's match. It's because he's uh, a bit weary, all the concentration, wicket-keeping and batting. So it'll be interesting to see how he goes here tonight he's going well so far but will his concentration hold up not sure if we were after the ball or if uh, the fielder out of mid-off wanted a souvenir a balloon the ball and um, it's wedged <laughs> yes, I think he was wise to get somebody else to go and do that <coughs> so this is uh, the end of the last ball of the third into the gap again oh no it was not quite into the gap that time in the air and for four again 12 runs off the over, five fours to Gilchrist so far. It's no wicket for 24. So only three overs have gone and the run rate is eight. Eight runs and over. So the Australians getting off to a bit of a flyer here thanks to Adam Gilchrist. Now it's Katic's turn. Oh, and he's out. Oh, he's out. He's hit it straight to mid on. Ganguly makes the catch. It was a shortish delivery. I think it was probably there for the pull shot. He didn't quite get hold of it. And uh, that's unfortunate for Simon Katic. Caught by Ganguly off the bowling of Bataan. Karic will be very annoyed at that. It was certainly there to be pulled, but short enough. But that might have hurried on to him a little bit. But uh, Bataan has once again confirmed his undoubted promise. One for 24.
Oh, Simon Cadditch is uh, out. Ricky Ponting is the new batsman. So the Australian captain is now at the crease. He'd be aware of uh, how difficult this is going to be for the Australians. They're going to have to bat well here. India made four for 296. And while Gilchrist has already hit five fours, and the run rate is through the roof, 7.57, they don't want to lose wickets on a regular basis because that's what does cause problems. You need wickets in hand to be able to really turn it on between 30 and 50. 30 and 50 overs, that is. They're pointing off the mark right away. I don't think that went exactly where he wanted it to go, but uh, all is well that ends well. Just as I was thinking, Carrie should be pushing little singles around to give um, Gilchrist the strike. He went for the pull, and it just dollied off the bat to uh, the skipper Ganguly. Well, that's a wide end, it's full. Way down the leg side. Well, it was going to be called a wide anyway, but uh, it certainly swung after it went past the stumps. It didn't give uh, Patel, the keeper, very much chance at all. Just goes there and wider and wider and wider. Yes, you got a little um, fingertip on it, but that was it. just getting himself um, settled in straight into the turf and straight to short extra cover there Badani was in that position all the Indians in the ground thought that was a catch not even find one or two hearts in the mouth the uh, Australians in the dressing room did as well uh, just a defensive stroke, but it went uh, fairly quickly to the man at short cover. That's its way down the leg side as well. Yeah, so he gets those, um, <laughs> that uh, really wide delivery went for a four, so that was. Uh, a nasty one that wasn't quite so bad just needs to get the swing under control oh good shot wasn't a bad delivery swung back in beautifully played by Ponting all the way along the ground I wonder if the two noises there if he happened to clip his pad as well as uh, the ball made it an even better shot I guess So definitely two noises there, and so uh, he just might have hit the top of his pad as it went through, and he had to get that bat down really fast. Ponting's, Ponting's definitely got to be a little careful. He's inclined to fall over at times, and if the ball swings back into the stumps, he won't be falling over too much because that's how you get out of LBW. However, that time it was fantastic. Well, that's why the other side. Youthful enthusiasm. Well, it looks as though Patan decided on all-out attack. Nothing about uh, holding it across the seam. They've got plenty of runs to play with. He's got one wicket. He's going to take the risk of um, trying to swing the ball. He's trying to swing it both ways. He's had the sharp one coming in from outside the off-stump to Pony, and then that one swinging away. Yes, uh, there have been quite a few fast bowlers, certainly with the new ball, that have um, actually held the ball across the seam or at least knocked it off its axis in order to stop it swinging. It can be very difficult. If the ball's swinging a lot, it can be quite difficult to bowl the right sort of line. And certainly some people find it difficult. This youngster is uh, running up, bowling flat out. That's better. It's a much uh, better line and a better length. That's one for 37.
One for 37. And Gilchrist, 22 of only 12 deliveries. So he's on strike now. Well, uh, the firing line on the offside, that's, uh, those are the guys at the firing line, the, the point fieldsman, square on the offside, right in the firing line there. And, of course, this chap here as well, who's already had one whistle past him. And uh, when he hits it square, of course, he comes into play. So they right... Uh, that one goes straight to backward point. It's... Uh, they, can, uh, they better get ready in that area because one way or the other it'll be coming in their direction. He's a fierce hitter on the offside. Just every so often he'll uh, hit one on the up, which gives the fielders who are back on that uh, fielding uh, mark, that uh, line that goes around, restricted fielding area. Gives them the opportunity to get a sight of the ball. Remarkable uh, how much easier it is to see the white ball when it's new, that is. Not so easy to see when it's old and scuffed up. But, uh, very easy to see for spectators, television viewers, players early on in this uh, light. We've got lights on all the way around the ground now. everyone in this uh, stadium will be hoping for a good game tonight and that means um, some good batting from Australia now we've already seen India bat well 296 so it's up to Australia now to make sure they get themselves in a position to win this match it's won all so far in uh, this series as far as uh, wins are concerned Australia won the first one and then India won the second one crowd really wonderful atmosphere at the Sydney Cricket ground tonight and a lot of Indians in the ground too which adds to the flavor a bowl I'm just look back a little bit one for 38 So just five overs have been bowled, and uh, there's a comparison. So the Australians getting off to a really solid start. Commentary now, Ian Chappell and Ian Healy. Next Tony, four more to Adam Gilchrist. He's in brilliant form. It's a matter of whether he can keep it going long enough to challenge this big Indian score. The wicket's been consistent, coming through nicely, so the Australians are playing shots just as brashly as the Indians did in compiling that 297. Hits the seam, good bounce, don't worry about it being so far outside off. The pull shot through mid-wicket. Was a good delivery a bit quicker jammed Adam Gilchrist six four, six four. 
We say welcome now to viewers in the Eastern States rejoining us for the Australian chase. Never one to let a chance go by. Adam Gilchrist, six fours in his 26. He's hot on the trail. But it needs to be a big one, not just a quick one. Beautiful timing. This ground is lightning fast. Patan's lost his control tonight. He's trying to swing it. He's been short in this over. Gilchrist pulled him for four through mid-wicket. Now full without the swing. Bang, off leg stump through a huge gap that's there at mid-wicket. He's tried a lot, none of it's come off. He has got the wicket. Got the wicket of uh, Simon Kadic. Attempting to pull Patan and hold out at mid-on. Now, there's no slip. We've got a short mid-wicket catching and the point fieldsman. I hope he's got all of his insurance paid up, the man at point. It's a very good delivery, bit of swing. That's what he wants. Gilchrist on the front foot. He had Kadic forcing a pull shot. Across the stumps goes Kadic and just dongs it to mid on. Patan's getting a bit of a reputation for that, getting onto the bat a bit quicker than they think. He's been good in Brisbane in the second spell he came back. And now he's doing it with the new ball. Mid on is very deep. Easy single. Gilchrist has been in blazing form. Seven boundaries. That was a slightly fortuitous one. That's a real treat. This huge crowd here tonight, many of whom are Indian. They're in for something special. If this top order can keep it going for another 45 minutes to an hour, it's all red. Seven fours, just three singles. That's well bowled. Yes, the Indian bowlers have got to Adam Gilchrist seeing red. Seven fours and three singles in his 31. India. They played extremely well. It was three for 80 at one stage, but VVS Laxman remained very cool. And boy, didn't he find a good partner in Yuvraj. Highest score in a one-day international at the SCG. 22 he hit off the 49th over from Ian Harvey. Two fours, two sixes. And it was a tremendous knock. VVS Laxman four one-day international tons now all of them against australia you might say in that they haven't actually worked him out yet they've tried a few things haven't they <laughs> today it was round the wicket the right hand is bowling round the wicket into the body of laxman he kept him no slips in position they kept him tight but he didn't panic he knew he had uvraj at the other end attacking everything that uh, that moved they played brilliantly off the back foot they whipped balls in the mid wicket and behind square and then when the australians pitched up they gave themselves some room and smashed things over cover some of the most exhilarating stroke play seen here yuvraj singh that's how he started his innings some back foot balls and the sweeping of andrew simons was something to behold and that was a fast yorker that he dug out into the gap behind square legs so uh, shots are plenty yeah, it was brilliant he's very wristy perhaps not quite as wristy as um, as vvs laxman but boy he's a good timer there's the hundred up that's an excellent piece of willow he's got called vvs laxman has contributed enormously with the bat in this summer but he's also done a lot of other things when he was out there batting with the uh, patel he was at the young guy the whole time you just saw him there in the field a moment ago very vocal having a lot to say to the other indian players 
And in the break when they got the wicket, he was talking to Murali Kartig about field placings. Does contribute. Two centuries in a week. It's got to take it out of you. VVS Laxman was just stretching there at short point or short cover. He's got to be tired. Heard he's knee today. Had a, had a smashed his knee on the ground diving in to prevent a run out. And whether that'll stiffen up over the next couple of days, let's hope not. We've already got Tendulka out of it, out of things. That's Yuvro Singh. Cleared mid on. And once it clears the infield, you can't track it down. It's a miss hit. Rocketing for four. Takes the inside edge. The inside half of the blade of Gilchrist and still goes over the infield. And for four. I don't think the Indians will be too perturbed to see him playing like this. Then I guess you always worry that it might keep going. But you must feel as a bowler, if you bowl well, you've got a chance of getting him out playing like this. I guess the keeper, as a keeper, you've just got to keep saying to the bowlers, keep bowling well and this can't go on. And then you say a little prayer. And you look back at the end of the night, if it has gone on, and say well played, because you can't do anything about it. Some of the balls that are being hit for four and even six these days are very good. They're, they're pitched exactly where they need to, needed to be pitched. And the crowd have heard just a little rumble of thunder in the background. Which team would like it most? Well, it's thunder with the bat as well. That's a big one. It's another example of a good ball going for six. Got it swinging at Jidagurka. He swung it right into the wrong area. Very deep mid wicket. Brilliant stroke play. The seventh over is finished. Australia needing runs, one for 58. Make that one for 60. The thunder rattles even more. Just to add another mix to the excitement of the SCG Game 7. It's almost like Gilchrist heard the uh, thunder and thought, well, i better get on with this even more. Well, I hope that Esky doesn't fill with ice. Two from 25. Now, Ricky Ponting can just do the job that Laxman did in the first innings and bat with Gilchrist, knowing that he'll take the risks. Ponting keeps his wicket intact and looks to get a runner ball and see how long they can keep that going for. If Gilchrist does get out, then the next batsman come in and they decide what sort of partnership they're going to have. Balaji, who's been good for the Indians. Quick start to his career. Bit of outswing there for Balaji. And just look at uh, Gilchrist's stats 8 1 4. They're the ones to uh, think about. Eight fours, one six, and four singles in 42. Tell you what, he's not going to get too tired from running between wickets. No, he's going to have a rest next week, too. So this is his last dash. He's made 172 in Hobart. One more to go, then have a right break. So I can imagine he's really keen to get his head down and keep it all together, even though he's going so aggressively. It's coming from the west, which is not a good sign here in Sydney, I believe. And uh, the wind is bringing that in. So uh, we could have a, a little bit of delay. There's not much behind it. It could be hard and fast. That'll encourage the bowler just a hint of outswing. Would be a pity if we do get a storm because this has all the potential. We've already seen some brilliant batting. And Gilchrist has now added to that brilliance. 
And remember that uh, no one has ever chased this target down at the SCG. 260 is the best chase at the SCG. So it doesn't have uh, a history of being a good ground to chase on under lights. That wind has changed direction in the flags which are flying at half mast. So that storm is coming against the wind, an even worse sign. I guess the one thing in Australia's favour when we're talking about uh, Sydney not being a great ground for chasing, this season it's been the quickest that uh, I can recall seeing it. And the wicket's going really well as well. It looks like it's holding up. The ball's coming on nicely. We'll see it probably slow up a little later on, but it's been good so far. Oh, too much width there, and see you later. I bet all the fielders in the offside have just said, thank heavens he picked the gap. Men rushing to the assistance of the bowler. Ganguly and Dravid both talking to Balaji. There's nothing much you can do with that. He's probably trying to keep it wide in the hope of an outside edge or a mistimed shot into those cover fielders, but sorry. I think what could be worth seeing here is how the uh, Indian spinners operate. They've at least got one frontline spinner, which Australia haven't been picking, and surprisingly not picking one at the SCG. So uh, it might get a bit tough against the... Uh, the spin of Murali Kartik, but if this man's there, anything might happen. That's why he's so important as far as India are concerned. If they can get him out of the way, that would make Murali Kartik's job easier. Gilchrist retains the strike. It's one for 66. Storm brewing here at the Sydney Creek ground. There's one in the middle as well. That's it. The name of Adam Gilchrist, 47 from 28 deliveries. The Indians are lacking answers to what Gilchrist is dishing up. So maybe the Indians will accept a storm right now. One for 66 after eight. And the wind is coming from those clouds. You can see those flags blowing that way. So it's bringing that in a little bit. And it's coming from both sides too. There's, there's some over the member stand as well. So who knows what's going to happen or where it's going to come from. Sit back and, and enjoy this block. So we've just got to block off the uh, the clock tower there in the showground and we'll stop the wind. You had it coming out of the, uh, the clock tower there. Yeah, there's plenty out in the middle too. A lot of the uniforms are and blowing around with the players. The India did really well, and look how it's being dwarfed by this man Gilchrist. It's not even Australia, it's Gilchrist. Ponting playing well, eight from 13 with him. But uh, it's not as easy as it looks to do what the Australians have started. Good effort from Yuvraj, but... Uh Ponting has just pushed that. They keep this sort of timing up. Heming Madani will be kicking more than the boundary ropes. The Indians will be kicking themselves, but uh, there's nothing that Agurka could, do, could have done better. He's got a forward defence out of Ponting. Singh's diving, can't do anything, and he's almost on the fielding circle, and Madani runs out of hope.
no slip now and we have a sh short cover and a short point. Uh, so he tried to play that too hard. Ricky Ponting tried to play all, a half an attacking shot there. His defensive shot went for four. Why change? Say hello to uh, Queensland viewers. With Australia making a terrific uh, effort here in the chase, a big chase. Target is 297. Australia are one for 71 after 8.4. Adam Gilchrist is on 48. And uh, Queenslanders will uh, understand about these sort of storms we look like we're about to get. Huge thunder at the moment. That'll be a wide. I guess you see enough of them in Queensland, uh, Ian. Yeah, certainly do. They come up slowly, creep up on you, and then dump as hard as they can, as fast as they can, and see what sort of uh, damage they can do. The crowd are loving this one, though. There's lightning, there's thunder, creating cheers and jeers. The crowd's been fully involved right from the word go today. It's been a really great atmosphere here at the SCG. The Indians, some of their problems have come because of the ball swinging. Five wides we've had so far, mainly with deliveries that have swung a lot. But I'll bet they don't want to lose that swing because that's their best chance of breaking this uh, partnership. So they don't want to try and stop swinging the ball. It's one for 73 from nine. That's the Sydney Tower at centre point. Good news is we can still see it. There's certainly a lot of uh, thunder rumbling around very close to the SCG. And looking over towards the Ranwick, uh, or looking through the Ranwick end there, it looks as though it's raining not all that far away. That's down towards the south. In southeast, it's raining. So is it moving? That's the other thing. Or is it going to skirt around the SCG? Well, I think we've just got the message because a lot of people are up and uh, putting brollies up. Well, that's well fielded. There's a lot of the crowd jumping up and uh, heading for cover and grabbing the brollies the umpires aren't taking any chances which I think is a wise move because if it does pelt down you want to uh, at least save the pitch in the surrounding areas so that if it uh, that if it does dry out or if it stops raining then you've got a chance but uh, sadly they can't get the gate open to get the gear out there and this is going to be a problem because it's heavy rain now and you can see the the bare spots the black spots out in the middle are quite black already down goes one of the uh, ground staff on the pitch that's not a good sign either there's going to be problems out there
For over 20 years, Combank has been supporting women in cricket so that thousands more girls can. Combank, proud supporter of women in cricket. Oh, welcome back to the Sydney Cricket Ground. Uh, a little quicker than usual, but this is actually what has transpired in the last 10 or 15 minutes. We're going to uh, place that down to probably a minute and a half. The rain has really swept in here. Right, let's summarise. I think very quickly, going to slip around close to the wicket, no doubt about that. Bowlers will have a few problems with the front foot and also following through. The batsman, my feeling about it is, it's going to skid just a little bit. And uh, as the night goes on, well then, it may just start to hold a bit. But normally it skids in these circumstances. But uh, I suspect all in all, equal, do you think? Or perhaps slightly in favour of the batting side? I think uh, pretty equal, actually, because there's so much work for the batting side to do. It's a tough challenge they've got. This is going to make it even more mysterious and tough. It's a one-day game. Let's get on with it. Yes, uh, Greggy in heels. A little earlier dashed out there and suddenly they had to dash back off because the players made their way out to the centre, as did the umpires, and play has resumed. Revised conditions. 34 overs the Australians will face. 225 is the total they require to win this match. Present one for 73. And picking up commentary as Ricky Ponting takes strike. Mark Taylor and with him Ian Chappell. Thanks, Simon. Ricky Ponting getting the first run after the restart. But I think the uh, previous ball that we saw might give us an indication of one of the problems the batting side is going to have. Where the, uh, the field has been so fast, Ricky Ponting mistimes the cut and it goes into that soft area and that slowed it up enormously. Now the outfield is probably not going to be slowed up much, but shots like the cut shot hit into the ground that will uh, slow the ball enormously. Just one of the problems. So I guess the other thing that the batsman will be looking to see is how much movement there is off the seam because of the rain on the pitch. Bowlers will also be a bit wary about slipping. Very good delivery there from Balaji. I guess what we're talking about, uh, Mark Taylor, is an unknown quantity. An unknown, that's the revised conditions. And because we're now looking at a 34 over match, you'll have no bowler bowling 10 overs. In fact, uh, four bowlers can bowl seven overs each. Um, two fielders outside the circle only for the first 10 overs, where normally it's the first 15. So that's the changes for the bowling side. Now, you talked about the disadvantages that the, the batting side may have. The one big advantage Australia have got is that they've made it an outstanding start. One for 74 from 10 overs means the equation now is 151 off 144. So that's not too bad when you consider that there's now only 24 overs left. We've got nine wickets in hand to score it around about a run of ball. So the outstanding start that Australia have made being 7.4 runs per over at this stage and only one wicket down means that they're in good shape because they now have less chance of being bowled out with only 24 overs left. So from that point of view, Australia in front, but there may be something in the pitch. And as Ian Chappell rightfully points out, the outfield will be changing as well. That's quite a shrewd move here by Ganguly. Patan was taking a bit of stick before uh, the rain came. But there may be a little bit of movement off the pitch. And if there is, this is the man to take advantage of it. So Ganguly has quickly got him back into the attack. Have a look and see what the pitch is doing. Yeah. Well, we're now into the 11th over. So the first fielding restriction has been relaxed. But, uh, India had to keep, well, we're only allowed two men outside the circle for the first 10 overs, but that's now gone. There was only uh, four overs left in those 10 overs when Australia came out to bat. So they've still kept the slip in, so they've got one catching man, but they've already got more than the, the two out. They've actually got four outside the circle, saving the boundary. Right call. 
Patan. He was swinging the ball a little bit, and that was creating problems for him uh, before the rain came. Been lots of chats with Patan. I'm not sure that you can't chat too much to a bowler when he's struggling a little bit. Sometimes just the odd word or two, but really best not to get in his ear too much. That's the glove. I think that number 50. Adam Gilchrist will wait for Daryl Harper. That no signal for him. And that's 50. Adam Gilchrist. And, well, what a 50 it's been. It's, it's probably taken two hours. <laughs> but an hour and a half it's been sitting in the sheds. 50, ball, 50 runs and 31 deliveries faced. Nine fours and a six. And he really has got Australia in with a real chance of winning this game. That will be the other problem for the Indians as well. See there, sort of Ganguly just putting down some sawdust on the pitch where uh, Irfan Patan is going to come in and was, that's where his back foot will land. So there's obviously some, still some moisture around that area. Uh, that's the last thing fast bowlers need, is to have their footing just slip as they deliver the ball. Once again, that swing causing problems for Patan. This is the swing and probably the uncertainty he's feeling with that back foot. Right in the sawdust. Licking quite a lot of it up and it starts on the wrong line. Ball starts well wide of off stump and continues to swing further away. point really Kartik's the man the boy had his work cut out that was probably hit only about two or three meters to his left hit like a tracer bullet it nearly slipped right underneath him kept it to two in the end straight away this now coming out for Adam Gilchrist who's on the charge Five men inside the circle now, all saving one. Beautifully bowled. Not really seen position here for the Patan. One of the features of his bowling, one of the reasons he's been able to swing the ball here in Australia and get a little bit of movement off the seam is because he has the seam in such a good position. It's nicely upright. It's generally facing towards first slip as he's bowling to the left-handers. If there is any swing, he will get it. That's beautifully timed. Well, the previous one was hit about three metres to Kartik's left. That one was about five metres to his right. The first one he just got to. This one, no chance. Raced away. No problems cutting into that uh, damp area for Adam Gilchrist. He probably, uh, in fact, hit it a bit past the damp area. There's not much of it on that side of the pitch. The other end cutting will be more into the, uh, the damp areas. One for 85. Six from 35, Adam Gilchrist. 
Ten fours and a six. 46 in boundaries for Gilchrist. That's uh, what Ricky Ponting will be looking for. Singles early in the over. Let Gilchrist have his head. Indians really need to uh, get their lines right here. It's not easy. Talked about the dampness around the uh, where the bowler's going to land his feet. There's also a slippery ball which the fieldsman having the occasional trouble with. Really, it's only a runner ball for this runs. That's all they need at the moment. 139 to win. 137 balls left. Really need some wickets here. Bill Chris looking for two. Sort of to put you into perspective in this game, Australia were chasing 294 to win this game. Now, with the rain delay, sorry, 297 to win the game, and a runner a run ball from the moment they walked out there. Now, what the rain delay has done, and with the start that they have had, thanks courtesy to Adam Gilchrist. They've really got themselves in a situation where they're, in real terms, they're almost like one for 170, chasing the 290 in about the 30th over. And uh, I think if you put Australia in that situation, they will feel they should win the game. 136 to win, 135 balls, with nine wickets in front. I think Australia will feel that they're in front in this match. And it's mainly because of that current run rate there you see in the top left-hand corner. 7.73 at the moment. Oh, that's a brilliant shot. Not where you need to be bowling. Well, it's been a treat for the crowd so far today. It's a shame that we've lost uh, quite a few overs with the rain. Because we've seen some beautiful straight play, firstly from Laxman and Yuvraj Singh. Now Adam Gilchrist has started brilliantly with 58 from 37. Now, Ricky Ponting getting in the act as well. Once again, too much on the pads. I think uh, Balaji is looking for the ball to swing away from the right-hander, but it's not swinging at the moment. Finishing up uh, on... Ponting's pads. Oh. One for ninety five. One for 95 at the moment, Australia needing 100. <laughs> Australia one for 95, they need a further uh, 130 to win from 132 balls. Gilchrist 58, Ponting 22. These are the ro revised conditions. 34 over game. Four bowlers with a maximum of seven. One bowler with a max of six. Two fielders outside the circle. Well, that's finished now. As we've gone past 10 overs, the target is 225. And Gooley coming into the attack now to replace uh, Patan. He's been struggling. Conditions may just suit Ganguly if he can get the ball to swing a little. I think that's his plan for sure. I think he's backing himself to try and get a lot more balls in the right area just to see if there is a little bit of movement off the seam. Yep. 
for two here. Or seven for one. And we're into the 13th over, so we still some 22 overs left in the match and still some 13 overs away from a game. By, by that I mean we need 25 overs, or Australia need to face 25 overs for there to be a game or a result in the match. And at this stage, Australia only need to be 150 if they're only one down. And to give you an idea, even if they're four down, they only need to be 156 to win the game. So should there be any more rain around, we need probably about 45 minutes of play to get to that 25 over mark. And Australia only need another sort of 50 odd runs. So at this stage, it doesn't look as though the uh, water has created too much of a problem with the pitch. And that's cleared the rope easily. Well, the fieldsman in the deep thought he was a chance when that ball was hit. He actually came in a couple of steps thinking that was going to be straight down his throat. He needed to be probably 10 or 15 metres further back. Ricky Potting is an excellent player of the square, the wicket shots, the pull and the hook. Uh, well held, sir. Well held. Well, that one did a bit. Well, what the uh, the dampness may have, the rain may have done if it. If the ball isn't actually gripping, although that one looked as though it may have gripped a little bit and uh, and bounced. If it's not gripping too much, then it's probably going to help the batting side because it means that the ball will just skid on, whereas it does tend to slow down a bit in the evening. It may have the effect of just making the ball skid on and come reasonably quickly, but that might be... Um, might be a bit of encouragement for Ganguly, that last delivery. It's well run. Now the problem uh, that Ganguly now has as well is that Australia have started particularly well after the rain break, coming out scoring quickly and freely. He's already made a bowling change, bringing himself on. The problem he's now got is that the keeper is uh, up over the stumps. And there's no slips in place, so that one we saw that beat Ricky Ponting doesn't really have a lot of men in catching positions now to take advantage of any movement off the seam. Since they've come back on, Australia have added 31 runs in only 21 deliveries. So they really have got India on the back foot. And the fielding, well, the fielding's been okay, but they're all been pushed back. Just the uh, mandatory four men inside the circle are all saving one. No one's in a real catching position anymore, and even the keeper is up over the stumps. None for 104. Sixty from thirty-nine, Adam Gilchrist. Really has been blazing away. Beaten a couple of times. 
one from Patan was a genuine coat of paint job. That one missed by a little bit more. Once again, a little bit of movement off the seam. That one certainly came back in to Gilchrist. So there is a little bit in the pitch if the bowlers get it in the right spot. We saw that earlier today where uh, Andrew Bickle picked up the wicket of Rahul Dravid by getting a ball in the right spot. Rahul Dravid came out to bat earlier today and scored 12 runs and 7 balls, hitting Andrew Bickle for 3 boundaries. But then Bickle got one with the right length around it off stump and just got a little bit of movement off the seam. Dravid edged behind for a simple catch to Gilchrist. That's what India need to do now. They need to get more balls in the right areas. No slip. That's four. And that's the advantage of aggressive batting. Gilchrist now to 64 off only 41 deliveries first came out that may well have been out he's been so aggressive that he's forced Ganguly to push the field back now he picks up a boundary from an outside edge no. oh, the crowd have been very hearty today to say the least they've enjoyed the the first 50 overs which was some fantastic batting from the Indians particularly Yuvraj Singh and they've lost about an hour and a quarter of play with a shower and a big storm passed over the ground but the majority of them the vast majority have stayed on for the finish of this match genuine freebie missed there by Gilchrist. Yes, they've come out to watch uh, two sides who have been, well, have had very close contests all summer, both with the white clothing on and now with the coloured clothing on. And this one's been no different. Oh, that's four more. His timing is impeccable. One for 112. 113 off 120 is the requirement for Australia. And the important thing is they've got nine in hand, and one of them is Adam Gilchrist. He's giving the Australians a nice little going away present. He's uh, having a bit of a break until the Perth match. Boy, he's going to go out in a blaze of glory. Twelve fours and a six. Well, that's 54 runs in boundaries. Out of the 68, shouldn't be all that tired either. Good consistent series in that one massive score, the second highest score made by an Australian in one day cricket. And Zimbabwe down in Hobart. Zimbabweans have kept a bit of a belting from Ponting and Gilchrist. We showed you Gilchrist's highest score of 172, made in Hobart about a week ago. Ricky Ponting also has his highest score against the Zimbabweans. Oh. Got this game in hand at the moment, the Australians. 112 to win, 117 balls, so they're in plus five if you look at it from that point of view. Five deliveries in hand from a runner ball, and that started about minus 10 when they came back out after the rain delay. Well fielded. Oh, and he's got the direct hit, but I think that uh, Gilchrist was home. Rahul Dravid was the fieldsman. It was a good effort 
firstly stopped the ball. Not easy fielding out. And there's been a bit of rain gone underneath the covers. Gilchrist is well home. So it was certainly a good effort from Dravet. for two well, Ajit Agurk has got the tough job he's the man fielding at deep point and the longest boundary in the ground now earlier today Australia had Andrew Simons patrolling that area Simons particularly quick across the turf and also has a very strong arm which you need that boundary oh, it's got to be close to 80 metres out there One for 116 after 15. Gilchrist has Australia on target, 109 from 114. Commentary position now, it'll be Richie Benno with Tony Gregg. Thanks, Ian. Well, uh, Gilchrist, 12 fours and a six already. That's, um, that's a very good performance in these one-day games. You have a batsman at the top of the order who can play like that. It really does put the opposition on the back foot. Ponting's also playing pretty well, 30 off 35, so they're going very well, Australia, at the moment. 109 of 113 balls, up in the top left-hand corner there. Keep an eye on that, that's what you've got to watch. Oh, he's blasted that one through the offside, but they've got a sweeper back right on the boundary there, so uh, he's going to cover anything 20 or 30 metres to either side. chat to his bowler there Laji uh, into his fifth over here no wicket for 25 so he's going for almost six and over Sweat absolutely pouring with Ricky Ponting. It's obviously quite sticky out there. Good positive running and uh, nice placement as well. You keep getting twos. It's going to make things a lot easier. been a frenetic day and night here at the FCG brilliant batting from uh, the Indians and uh, the big thunderstorm and uh, suddenly Duckworth Lewis came in now there's a revised target and pretty much in favor of uh, the batting or the side batting second in these circumstances always bearing in mind that you've got to have uh, 25 overs to get a match into over number 16 now uh, those two figures there 104 to win 109 balls uh, it's on the right side for the Australians just a uh, question of whether or not uh, the storms will keep away well it's well fielded there's been some fantastic fielding today. Once again, it's Rahul Dravid. That's uh, twice in a matter of two overs. It's one for 121.
One for 121, and we're going to see another change now. Spin is going to be introduced. Muruli Kartik has been given the ball by Sorov Ganguly, and he's a left-arm orthodox spinner. Now, one of the things that uh, the fielding team can do, if that ball gets wet, and uh, the umpires consider that uh, it's as a result of a moist outfield, which wasn't uh, moist, of course, when... The Australians were feeling they can change the ball on quite a regular basis if they so wish. One of the considerations Kartik may be giving to this situation is he'd probably want to feel that seam because if the seam gets really wet, it can be quite difficult to grip. I'll be interested to see how much he turns it because uh, when you and uh, Ian Healy were doing the pitch report while we're uh, getting the, all the surrounds and the pitch right, it seemed, from uh, listening, that uh, there was some moisture that got through the surface, so the ball might grip a bit. We've already seen one big leg cutter from uh, Saurav Ganguly. Uh, just a question whether the left arm spinner can uh, grip the ball, whether it's going to get damp through going across the outfield, and whether he'll be able to get some grip off the dampish surface. It's the other thing that happens... Uh and it happens more often than not soon after rain you get the ball skidding and uh, my initial reaction when we went out there was well it might just uh, skid through skid over the top a little bit but it's going to dry out very fast a little bit of turn there for him so i think there's obviously some grip there both in terms of uh, the pitch as well as uh, coming out of his fingers gone uh, once across the outfield and uh, it needed uh, Rudikardik to dry it just by rubbing it very briskly on uh, his trousers this is interesting and five in the circle now so um, that area over the top of mid on's head is vacant I don't think Moodley Kartik is going to give him too much that's loose. He'll obviously try and keep it relatively well pitched up. There's absolutely no point in dropping anything short. These two, because they both play the pull shot so well. And that's well fielded. He should have got that one away. Ponting, he's not happy with himself. Well, that one certainly skidded off. It looked as though it was uh, meant to be the top spinner from Moodley Kartik. Right, now we've got the left hander with the ball spinning into him and Gilchrist, of course, with uh, such a positive attitude. His first thought will be, right, where are the gaps for boundaries here? And um, well, he loves to play the sweep shot. He plays that uh, very well. Both he and Hayden tend to try and sweep very hard with the ball spinning back at them. The gap for him at mid-wicket mid if he um, hits it over the top of the infieldsman. Oh, he's uh, got it through on the offside. Well, this is running away very fast. It'll get there, I think. No, it hasn't. That's uh, very well done. Oh, it's come close again. I think he probably just managed to get that one and uh, pull it back inside before he hit the rope. Yep, brilliant piece of fielding. It was getting away from him there. Only a minimal amount in it, but brilliant fielding. single 
Six from the over, one for two, one two seven. That's what's required, and uh, it all equates to 5.7 ticks, six and over. And uh, the important thing here is that Australia have still got nine wickets in hand. Patan back into the attack. He's, uh, he's the one they're looking to now to get a wicket. They need a breakthrough, India. He's got the one wicket to go down uh, so far. That was Simon Karic, who was brought in as an opener for this match. Trying to play the pull shot, caught by Ganguly at uh, mid-on. Right, can he get one to move off the seam? Can he um, perhaps induce a false stroke? Must get a wicket India if they want to get back into this game. It's time to slip away from them now. Well, that's over the top, and uh, well, it's running away down to third man. I think he looked to me as if he was trying to hit that over extra cover. So well, they've decided to take him on. Big thick edge, I think. Don't be surprised if uh, Patan manages to get some movement off the seam out there. That uh, touch of dampness in the surface we talked about. And uh, quite a heavy atmosphere now. Wide given, way down the leg side again. That seemed to go the other way. A little reverse swing there. Gurkha's uh, doing good work out there on the boundary. He's been very fast to the ball. And he has a powerful throwing arm. Gurkha, five overs, no wicket for 38. He's been quite expensive. Oh, he's trying to smash that out the ground. So I'm not quite sure that that's... Uh, required at the moment pointing uh, trying to get down the wicket and uh, flat bat him way over the top of mid wicket well certainly not required uh, I'd suggest because we're now into the 18th over you've got to have 25 overs for a game and uh, they're well ahead of the run rate they need One of the problems with the um, period after rain, it's not easy to run between the wickets. Uh, you pick up mud on your spikes as you're uh, running up and down. Field of slips as well. And then when you try to turn to go back for the second, got to finish up uh, borrowing uh, a knife or a file or something like that from uh, the umpire to clean the dirt off his spikes. Again, good running. Very good running through there very quickly. 
So uh, one wide ball, yes, they've got another ball to ball in this over. Good batting lineup, this Australian lineup here. Martin next, Simons, uh, he's been playing pretty well. It's the ball very hard. Bevan, oh, enough said, he's uh, been brilliant over the years. Michael Clark in this lineup as well, the youngster. Harvey after him, so plenty of batting to come. One to 132. Well, you've got to look at that current run rate and the required run rate. They're going along very comfortably, and um, they've only got a score now at 5.81. 93 of 96. That's the way uh, to look at it. Always oh, hit that well. Right into the gap. Oh, brilliantly struck. Well, I think that's one of the features of uh, Gilchrist's game is the incredible timing. I mean, he's obviously strong, but boy, that was timed beautifully. Placement was so good. There are two men out there at uh, deep forward, deep backward square. He's kept it down. He's rolled his wrists on it. Knew precisely where he had to hit it. Just past Steve Buckner's left ear. Well, I reckon he's on target here yeah, if he gets 100 to score the fastest 100 by an Australian in one day internationals. He uh, currently jointly holds that position with Alan Border. Both uh, 78 balls. Border did it in Adelaide and uh, Gilchrist in Christchurch. There's ah! that sweep shot I was talking about here. Poof, does he try and smash it again, uh, targeting that area just behind square. Well, it's a good reply from uh, Murali Kardik. He hasn't uh, dragged the ball down. He hasn't just uh, pushed it into the turf. He's given it a bit of air. Trying to induce the full stroke. But India need a wicket. Only the one down so far, that's Simon Kadic. Well, they'll try and test him here for the second. This is good running again. That's a long boundary down there, and because he hits it so hard, they like to be nice and deep. And uh, what do they do? They pinch two. That's the other thing um, about Gilchrist is that he's second only to Mark War in terms of the highest score in one day international cricket. Ganguly um, with just one ball to go, wanting to make uh, all the changes in the world. I think uh, in situations like this, you're better off waiting for the next over or give the bowler something to think about between overs. It goes again. This time they'll try again. I think about two. This time they decide to stay back for just the same. At the end of the over, it's one for 139. That <laughs> should have gone to spec savers. Book an eye test online with the test experts. Oh, and he's got it away fine. That's four. 
Oh, he looked to me as if he was trying to steer it in that direction. So the Australians are going okay, 82 from 89 balls. Yeah, that was in, in the end it was um, a top edge, I suppose, but he was certainly aiming it uh, down in that direction. Trying for the back cut. Just a reminder that uh, you need uh, 25 overs in the second innings of a limited overs international before you can say you have a game. We're into the 20th now. Oh, well fielded. Wanting backing up there and finding it just a little bit uh, damp underfoot. Struggle to turn around perhaps as quick as he might otherwise have done. Once again, Rahul drive it in there. Uh, Patel running up to drive the results in him going to slip <laughs> a bit of zip about uh, Patel's bowling Ganguly's out at mid on where he took the catch off Kadic and that zip just hurries the batsman's stroke Um, not entirely happy with the dampness on that seam, I'm sure, finding it just a little bit difficult to grip. Just a little bit of a drizzle out there at the moment. Hit and run right now, and uh, they're doing it very well. And just to give you an idea of what they're up against, uh, India won the toss today, and that's what they did. Laxman played superbly for 130, and Yuvraj Singh who uh, well, doesn't play in their test side, made 139 of 122 balls. It was a superb knock. Uh, four for 296, and things have now been adjusted because we had a, a long interruption for rain, a very heavy shower here. The um, little bit of a shower, a very light shower going over the top of the ground. It seems to me that uh, yes, they, they really are um, trying to work out a way down there of getting all this out of the way quickly. The problem is if the screen is over the top, as it can be if the bowling is from the other side, then they have a problem. They've got to move the screen first. And they've got an upright, which is very difficult to, uh, to get down before they can actually drive the tractor out. Apparently for you know, four or five years now, they've been trying to get that system changed down there because of the very problem we had today, where it just takes too long to get the tractor and the covers onto the ground. Seven off the over, one for 146. One for 146, 79 off 84, that's the equation, looking good for Australia. The run rate is good for uh, the Australians. Brad Hogg is uh, the 12th man for this match. The Australians won for 146, and the left arm spinner 
Murali Kartik going to go up in the southern or Randwick end. Just light rain falling. So I just noticed that uh, just a moment ago there might have been a piece of paper out there and uh, it is pretty important because Ponting and Gilchrist would want to know exactly what they need to have at 25 overs when the match is on. Bear in mind that uh, once 25 overs have been bowled, then we have a match. Now under the Duckworth-Lewis system, the target after 25 overs is 150. At 150 is 150 to win. That's uh, making the assumption that they haven't lost another wicket. So um, they, they should have that covered quite comfortably. Still with uh, another four hours after this to go before the 25 over mark. But they'll be checking every now and again just to make sure with rain around. And it's not easy to see it coming at night. There's such a concentration of light inside the clear ground. It's hard to see the clouds and the build-up. Oh! oh, that's well bowled. Beautifully bowled. Now, did that beat the outside edge? Well, that one is... Uh... I think able to be put down to uh, the dampness on the pitch. A little bit of rain got on the surface, just softened the top just a bit. Not on! Once again, spin for Murali Kartik. Handy in these situations to take a wicket. You've uh, but the reduction in overs and a target set and the Duckworth-Lewis method, it's all a touch complicated. Rain is starting to come down. We're into the 21st over. Yes, and the crowd is beginning to get a little frustrated with Dravid, who's wandering over to Kartik and uh, talking field placings uh, at least twice an over. I think they probably think he's trying to make sure they don't get to 20 overs. Six of seventy nine, totally under control. And looking for the single. Oh, that would have been close. Direct it there. Now then, who's hurt his back? Yuvraj is uh, on the ground. And he's, uh, he's come down, seems to me, on his, uh, on his hip there. Let's watch him here. Yes, I think he's just come down a little, uh, a little hard on his side there. Yes, I think he's going to be okay. Obviously, uh, just a little jolt as he came down. Quite a hard square out there. They don't need him off the ground. He's a very good fieldsman. The crowd getting a little restless here. They they consider this is uh, taking too long. The umpires have now uh, well, got themselves nice and close. A bit of slow hand clapping going on. <laughs> Ponting just having a little glance down uh, towards the uh, board down there, and uh, on that board they've uh, now just notified us that the official attendance set tonight is 39,088. Fantastic crowd. Now, Adam Gilchrist and Ricky Ponting are going across to have a say with the umpires. Uh, 
just to see if they can get on with the game. Yuvra Singh uh, looks as though he's going off the field. Yes, they've, um, they're certainly taking it nice and slowly. And uh, umpire Buckner, they're quite keen to get things uh, underway again. So uh, the issue here is we need to have completed 25 overs for there to be a match. And of course, uh, what the crowd have picked up on here is that they reckon the Ganguly is just slowing things down because his only chance is uh, if the rain comes down and they don't get the 25 overs in. But I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, and he's caught behind. Yes, he is. Well, that's absolutely unbelievable. A little break like that, a little stoppage, a wide delivery. It was uh, just short of a length and wide, and uh, he went after it and hit it. Yep. Second wicket down, and now uh, into the 22nd over. So there are a few complications around for the Australians. Patan has taken the wicket. Ricky Ponting out for 42 from 54, and it's 2 for 150. So 2 for 150 now. So Ponting, the other man out, Damien Martin, is the new batsman. In at number four for Australia. Oh, that's out. Caught behind. First ball. Yes, has to be. Up goes the finger. Yes. Caught behind. I don't know what he's doing standing around there. That one was a huge deflection. That's uh, Damien Martin's second first baller. That was a good delivery, mind you. It looked to me as if it went away off the seam. May even gone away a little bit in the air as well. And the Indians all of a sudden are back in it. They certainly are. That was beautifully bowled. It has darted away off the seam. Long, long way. Now then, three for 150, and we're into the 22nd over. Damien Martin has ducked the wicket off the top. Right, well, that was uh, unbelievable. The Indians straight away got themselves into a little huddle and said, right, come on, guys, you could see. But uh, they now think they've got half a chance, and uh, so do those, <laughs> everyone in the crowd. Mind you, just a little bit of a problem. This is Patan's last over. He's got 351. He's uh, into his seventh now, and um, well, there he is, Simon striding out to the centre. Well, now Gilchrist's uh, role does become ever so important. A lot more pressure on him. On a hat trick. Wouldn't that be something else? Right, go on then, Sorov, give him a second slip. He's got uh, just one slip in position there. And the way he's bowling, it could so easy just uh, nick one to second slip. The other wickets again, first ponting. This was a wide delivery, delivery. had been a little break. Ponting went after it uh, and he hit it. And then this ball, beautiful. look at the seam there, upright, just moved away off the seam and nicely taken. Difficult, uh, difficult one that to get first ball right. Now, can he get a hat-trick? Oh, it wouldn't be a tragedy if he nicks this and it goes through second slip. All the Indians want another one. He's had two balls this over, got four to go. Here we go. Oh, he's left it. <laughs> That's a good leave. You've very nearly drawn into the stroke. Good comeback by Patan. Runs to win 75, the same as the ball still to be faced. That's a big nick. Oh, beautiful ball. Absolutely magnificent delivery. 
and eventually up goes the finger. <laughs> and he's got a bit of spirit about him, hasn't he? Rahul Dravid uh, up in the air. Damien Martin stays there, just looks down the pitch, and eventually the dreaded finger comes up. There's his reaction. I think he might have enjoyed it. Right, so that's the uh, the change now to the Duckworth Lewis target at 25 overs. So it's three for 153. No. Hasn't changed that much, but the runs have dried up. So things might start to change a little bit. Mind you, we've got uh, Gilchrist down one end, and Andrew Simons, if he stays there down the other end, they score as fast as anybody. 75 off 73 to win the match. Patan is about to bowl his last delivery. Three for 51. He's been quite expensive. He's gone for about seven and a half runs and over. Oh, that is well done. A wicket may a double wicket maiden. It's three for one fifty. Seventy-five off seventy-two. Australia won't uh, want to lose any more wickets here. And what you don't want to happen is uh, to find yourself starting to worry about the wickets in hand. Right, Gilchrist uh, playing absolutely beautifully. Ninety-one. He's got off uh, sixty-six. The fastest hundred uh, by an Australian, 78 balls. But this is going to slow him up. Now that he's lost uh, Ponting and Martin, he's going to have to be a little bit more responsible, I suspect. Judge! Oh, and uh, that one just lobs up in the air into the gap. There's just enough there in the pitch for the left arm spinner Murakari. Quick ball. It was it was pretty much a deliberate chip over. I guess he didn't know where that one was. So um one point of interest is can Gilchrist score the fastest one day international hundred by an Australian ever? I don't think that'll be on his mind though. He'll be very keen to make sure that he gets his century here and kicks on. Make sure Australia wins this match. Good running there and Gilchrist goes now to 95. Back to the bowler. The 95 of 70. 71 correction. Cut. Oh, and he's got him. He's out. Cotton bowled. That's beautifully taken. 
Absolutely magnificently done. Gilchrist down the wicket, driving very firmly. Murali Kartik has got it to turn just a little bit. And uh, it's come whistling back at him, and he has taken a beautiful catch. This is clever cricket. Murali Kartik's bowled well. A little bit of moisture there make it difficult to hold the ball, but he hasn't pushed the ball through. On the contrary, he's given it plenty of air. It doesn't matter which batsman's been up the other end. He's always on the lookout for the court and bold, and he's picked up Gilchrist now for 95 from 72 balls. And we have a very interesting little contest on our hands here, 4 for 154. Well, uh, these wickets have certainly brought a smile to some of these Indian faces, I can tell you. They're having a wonderful time out there. They really are. Four down for 154. Have a look at some of the smiles. Boy, they love the cricket and they love the camera just as much. Michael Bevan is the new batsman. And he has this uncanny knack of taking it right down to the wire. 71 of 66. And it's going to be Ganguly. He's, uh, he's not about to rush this. Uh, 23 overs have been bowled. There's a little bit of uh, misty rain in the air. And he's decided now's the time to get all that mud off his, uh, off his boots. Fair enough, too. Bit difficult to bowl with that stuff in your boot. This is uh, Murali Kartik's wicket. Just have a look at this one. Driven back, didn't quite middle it. But he had to go quite a long way to his left, two-handed, and he caught it beautifully. Yeah, it was very well bowled. Good cricket. You tend to think that uh, the spinner will push the ball through in conditions like this. Where he's uh, not necessarily able to grip the ball perfectly. Not a bit of it. He's given it air, invited the batsman to drive. And he's picked up the wicket and once or twice had uh, Gilchrist in a little bit of trouble as well, apart from uh, that wicket taken delivery. Well, the crowd are getting a bit agitated uh, as Ganguly just make sure that he's got uh, his spikes cleared. Right now, what he's got to do is get a wicket. So the Duckworth Lewis. Um, target just changed it a little bit because another wicket's fallen but uh, that's not a problem for Australia at the moment four down for 154 Gunguli bowls medium pace, he can get the ball to move around a bit, he definitely put it on the seam. He'll never bolt upright. Oh, that's short, and that's nicely hit away down the square leg. Just the single though. Single brings uh, Michael Bevan under strike. He's uh, not had a particularly good series so far. Hasn't necessarily been in at what would be regarded as a good time for him where he can build an innings. And here we've got Ganguly moving the ball around a little bit off the seam and uh, really quite a, uh, spinning it a bit. Off 63. It's getting a little tense. So 
So eight balls to go before we have a match. <laughs> I wonder whose side they're on. That's the Sri Lankan flag. I can tell you that uh, they are taking these pictures in Sri Lanka, so uh, probably trying to get a message back to relatives. Well fielded. single here absolutely vital and they'll settle for one there as well ball for 158 One over to go, and uh, when I say one over to go, one over to go before we have a match. We have a match after 25, and they're in front of the target, so that's not too bad. Four for 158. To tell you more about it now, Ian Healy with Bellori. Thank you, Tony Gregor. Magnificent innings by Gilchrist out for 95, pointing 42. Caddits 2. Damien Martin, a duck. 67 off 60. Kartik is doing a magnificent job. Four overs, one for 21, the big wicket of Gilchrist. Magnificent delivery, got a plenty of fight, got some turn. Gilchrist drove on the up. A fine catch. Simon's on two, Bevan on two. Good evening, Ian Hilly. Good evening, Bill. I'm not happy the umpires need to step in here. There's too much monkey business going on. Changing of boots, cleaning of boots, time wasting. There's 10 overs to go. The lights here are supposed to go off at 11 o'clock. The Indians, that's the next thing. The game won't finish. Oh, oh well, ball got through and there's no slip. Did he hit it? Leg buys. Got that front foot outside off, maybe. Looking to whip to the left of screen. Foot planted early. Outside edge of the pad. Pack the runs. Two of them. Certainly outside the line, but well bowled. Good fight. It's a well run. Sixty-four of fifty-eight. Australia doesn't want to lose another wicket here. Plenty of wickets in hand at the moment. Maybe for. Kevin could be in a bat pad, try something here. Again, Gooey. He's in the odd one to turn a fraction. Good fight. Good practices for the Australians. Use it as practice. It doesn't really matter if they, they win here as far as their fortune or they lose here as far as their fortunes in this series go. They're going to make the finals against India. If they use this as a good practice run for when they're in this situation later. Wait to cover. Oh, I think this man on screen, Kartik, he should play in the Sydney game, Sydney final. He's bowls beautifully on this pitch. Good fight. Good change of pace. Good field of his own bowling. And just good body language. He's keen, isn't he? He's been flown out here in Australia in the Adelaide Test match, the second of the summer. And there's a very little to do, but he's kept everything going he's been working hard at practice and he stepped up when he's been asked and he's got a slip in now too well played 
Roberts goes all the way. It was just a fraction short. Simon's rocked back and placed it beautifully. Just another of the magnificent shots we've seen today. Looked like he was falling off this cut shot badly. It spun. And he's still got... Got it 80 metres for four. Sixty or fifty-five. They're still wasting time. Last ball of the twenty-fifth over. He's still oh, praying for that just. rain to come. Oh, a little uh, trickle around the corner. Two, they should get at least three. Over oh, bowl is four for one six eight. Fifty-seven of fifty-four, six wickets in hand. One stage Australia were one for one hundred and fifty until Patan ch chipped in with two wickets of two deliveries. He rides back on the field. The better fields are out there. Miraculous recovery by Uvraj. Simon showed us a bit last over. Big powerful cut shot. And then I like what you called it, Bill, a trickle sweep. This is the fall away cut shot. Bang, 80 metres beat the fielder. And then the trickle sweep from a pretty good ball. Ball and straight, a little bit of spin. And he still found a way to get three from it. Plenty of bowlers have gone the journey today. Nicely played again, just the single. Four bowls can bowl seven overs in this reduced match. Khan's bowled out three for 51. agurka has got two. Bulaj has got two. Fifty-six of fifty-two. A Bevan of Sup comes in, that's a good move. They need a wicket, India. Four men inside the circle on the off, one on the on for Michael Bevan. Cuts. A knockdown. They get a single. He's gone straight back into the toughest position on the field. He's got the dodgy hip. He's still limping, and they put him in the, the shifty bit of the surface. And Bevan's a big cutter. Bang, he's back on the hip again. Tough team, this Indian mob. Well, he's looking for a man of the match, isn't he? Takes two great catches now. He's made him one of the best hundreds we've ever seen on the Sydney Cricket Ground at One Day International. He's one of the better fieldsmen. He's a good catch. He's a good athlete. It's 55 off 51. Ah! Oh, he's got him, I think. Big noise. Oh, there was a noise. What was it off? Well, there was a noise there. Was it bat hitting pad? Hitting the ground? Inside of the pad there, one feels. The keeper was pretty confident. <laughs> and I think the bowler only supported the keeper's confidence. He wasn't up spontaneously. Gone for that. It's a big hit. It's a big, big one. Wow, that's a good reply. That's six over. Long off. Whitey's long off. That's beautifully struck. 
all of a sudden it's 49 or 49. Hopefully everyone in the crowd's all right, because that is a spectator killer. Hands would be going up to catch it, people would be ducking everywhere. If someone wasn't right on the ball, they could have been clocked by this. Gives himself some room and flattens it. 70 metres. Magnificent. Great hit, great camera work. Tommy whips the square. He's out, straight down the throat of a Gurkha. Well, game on here, five for 176. Big wicket for the captain, good catch of Gurkha. Simons has gone for 16. Well, what a sequence of three deliveries. Play and miss, a big appeal by the wicketkeeper and fielders. A flat batted six over straightish cover. And then a really powerfully flicked ball onto the leg side. Straight to the man who takes a good catch. The Indians are huddled firmly at mid-wicket. Simon's on his way. Five for 176. Michael Clark. The young gun from New South Wales comes in under pressure here. Bevan on four. Simons has gone for 16. Brilliant 44 he made against India in the final of the TBS Cup in India recently. 44 from 28 balls. They need it again. 49 from 48 total. Good field here too. Slips in, short mid wickets in. It's a new batsman. He likes to drive. Always a chance for stumping early on with Michael Clark as he uses his feet. Large, he'll spin the ball away from the right-hander. 49 off 48 with five wickets in hand. No! Oh, he's missed dumping. It was on, wasn't it? He's missed it again. Clark, always a chance if he can get the ball to go away. It was a quickish delivery. Didn't glove it. There he comes. Missed it. Doesn't gather. Oh dear. Tommy stays at home. Beautiful piece of bowling by Kartik. It's been up out of the hand. Stayed low. And the gloves of Patel were good. They were low. They weren't soft enough. He didn't respond. It hit him in the cuffs. It might have been an edge. Parks off the mark. And that's well run. And that's a big miss, that beautifully bowled by Kartik. Did him in fight. Tough for a keeper, the Yorker. Clark plays over the top of it. And keeps it down. Probably did hit the bottom of the bat, that's why it stayed low. He was down there, didn't do a lot wrong. Time to get on with things now, worry about it in 45 balls time. It could be another one come straight away. Comes again, Clark, this time he gets some bat on it, goes down to long off for single. 46 off 44. Andrew Simons just whipped it away, got a bottom hand straight down the throat of Fagurka, good outfielder. Caught it well under pressure. Simon's gone for 16. Michael Bevan's got a big role to play now. He's got to get some singles, he's got to get some twos, get Michael Clark into his innings and really show his experience. What's he got? I tend to think of in close from Michael Bevan, a bat padded on the upper on side. I don't think he's playing that well at the moment. Don't let him get that easy single away. 46 off 43. Oh dear, he tried to cut it, got a bottom edge. Five off the over, five for 181.
44 of 42. Be just to a 34 over contest due to rain. Again, Gooey to bowl his fifth over. Slip in, that's a good move. They need a wicket. It's about a third slip. Point cover mid off, mid on inside the circle. Yeah. Bang. Out to deep point for single. Well, Ganguly's fourth over was pretty eventful. Appeals, sixes, wickets. Balaji will probably come back in. He's bowled five, none for 29. Bowled in tough periods, Balaji, when the, the freshness of the wicket and the rain delay, this was the court behind they appealed for. Pretty sure it missed everything. The inside edge of the bat hit the pad. Ganguly a little late to go up and support his captain. Wasn't too happy with the outcome. Bevan swing and a miss. Slip in at backward point, cover mid off for Bevan. That ball did deviate away, it went past the bat, it caught behind a peel, but it was just off the seam. Then a big six, a great six, in fact, from Andrew Simons. It's just a magnificent stroke. He made it look so easy, just went bang and it went right over, I suppose, a cover position, really. It's carried a long, long way. Oh, got to be half a chance. He missed. Oh, dear. Suicide running. You've raised sing their best. And in from that backward gully area. Picked up on the left hand. And just missed the stumps. Clark well short. Would have been handy. Party Patil would love that run out to be gone because he's missed stumped him. Another way we could have got rid of him. A very ordinary call. That net 42 off 39. Ganguly. Oh, a little inside edge. They're going again this time. Patel has a bit of a shy, safely home. 39,000 here, full house today. Captain's putting in. A little bit of seam. Inside edge on that occasion. This is really a traditional Sydney wicket right now. Probably a little more moisture than traditional, but it, it's slowing up. It's just holding the seam a little bit and starting to spin. Bevan swing and a miss. Ball went a long way off the seam. Called a wide. He's not going to be happy again, Gurley. He reckons he had a court behind. He hit for six and he gets a wicket. <laughs> a lot of pressure. 40 off 38. Michael Bevan still playing and missing. He hasn't found the middle yet. Let's have a look how wide it was. He gave himself some room. It's inside the white marks. Tough call by Steve Buckner. Patel up to the stumps now. Tough ask. Wait. Straight to Gully. No run. The win 40. 37. Bowling well, Ganguly. Just a little bit sideways movement. Yuvraj Singh enjoying this. Highest score in a one-day international at the SCG he, he made today. 139 from 122. He wants it finished off. down a cover you get a single five off the over it's five for 186 
39 of 36. Bartik doing a wonderful job with his orthodox spinners. They've had a great day. Magnificent batting performance by the Indians in the first session. Gilchrist 95 off 72 in the run chase and a reduced over situation. Forecast thunderstorm hit and hit hard. Some of them underprepared, but they don't care. They've had everything. They've had magnificent batting and now a tight finish. Oh, Bevan all over the place. Gets away with it. No appeal for LBW. Leg by. This is worth a huge shout. I don't know whether the keeper was there to appeal. He was hearing off after the rebound. Kartik gave it the full shout. Let's have a look at it. Bevan covering his stumps. Gets hit in the middle of the strike zone. Pretty hard for the umpire to judge. Just how much that spun onto the front pad and whether or not it was going down leg. Long way down. Probably saved it. Probably just missing leg. Oops. Almost a weeding edge, but he gets a single clerk down to long off. He's got flight, he's got just enough spin, and his pace has been great tonight, Murali Kartik. He's varied it, he's, he's thrown it up out of the hand at times, he's got the batsman coming down, and no one's come out of their crease and collared him. He's been quite deceptive, with very little bowling under his belt. His final over, 6.2 overs, 1 for 35. Dot ball. 37 off 33. Australia favourites. India need another two quick wickets. In amongst the bowlers. Two batsmen still at the crease. Yep. Evan pulls nicely, but just the single. Looks very composed, Michael Bevan, doesn't he? He's been here more, more than anyone in this situation before. In his mind, he generally has a, all the singles planned and then one area of the ground, if the ball happens to get into that zone on the pitch, in his boundary area, he'll go for it. That's all he needs to do, 36 from 32. Run a ball, a boundary every now and then, and we're home. Cut nicely down to a deep point. He might look composed, but he hasn't hit one in the middle. It's been all over the place it's to Kartik, who's beat him in quite once or twice. And a bowl his final delivery. It's been a wonderful spell of spin bowling with maybe a greasy ball. Picked up Gilchrist, caught and bowled for 95. Should have had Clark stumped. Can't do more than that. Coming back for the second, that's well run. It's 5 for 192. Someone's with a Linter Energy? Yeah, of course. Aren't you? Yeah, especially with their great energy deals. Either of you guys seen my wicket keeping? Gloves! Get a great energy deal. Switch to a Linter Energy, supporting your home team. for 192, Bevan on 11, Clark on 7. Jadani! 33 off 30. Yeah, yeah. Have a chance. Oh! And they get a run. Now how about that? Just a regulation single. Clark's run two there. He's come down halfway. Fox the fielder into making the throw. They hit the stumps for once. He goes through further than he needed to and still makes it. And the keeper was chasing the bail. Went the wrong way. 
32 of 29. Had to be picked up at some stage, Bill. Now Michael Bevan, this is his his situation. This ball, follow up that single with a one or a two and put the Indians on the back foot early in each over. Takes the pressure off the batsman and the big shot doesn't have to be played. Third to backward point, dot ball. Thirty-two of twenty-eight. They know a couple of quick wickets. Anybody's match. Good bowling by Ganguly. Tight on off stump. No room for a cut or pull. Yes. 50 50 in the over so far. Two singles from three deliveries. Who's going to break? Is the batsman going to get a boundary away? Or is Ganguly going to pile another dot on? Is the batsman going to get a top edge? Gone to great lengths to support their team. Yeah. Good shot. Push it nicely down to long one for single. 30 off 26. Key could be Balaji coming to the attack shortly. And the Gurkha. Main strikers. Bit of extra pace. Maybe one seam, bounce. Straight to mid wicket, no run. After the scintillating start Gilchrist got them off to, the Australians really should have won this this match. Their run chase remain the same runs required remain the same but in a shorter run chase so they're expected to win i think a win to india would do a lot more for india's prospects of the future than a win to australia australia had to battle for the win that they probably should have had a little easier not over yet though ah, it's bowling. he's knocked him over the captain what a performance a little bit of in swing bevan's gone and it's six for 195 and 30 off 24. He's risen to the occasion in the test matches and now the one day as the skipper. That's well bowled. Ganguly is so desperate to get his young troops over this line. He's bowled tight the whole over. He's bowled straight and a good length, not half volley. And not too short. That one on the perfect length with a little bit of off cut. A leg cut to the left hander. Thank you. Six for 195. Tremendous atmosphere here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Six for 195, Australia. Michael Bevan's been knocked over by Ganguly for 12. Ian Harvey comes to the crease. That was the last ball of Ganguly's sixth over. Michael Clark is on strike. There's a change at the Randwick end. Uh, Gurkha coming into the attack, so he's got him. Gurkha. Balaji and himself. And Gilly 2 for 32. Tan 3 for 51 off his 7. We've got one batsman on an all round at the crease now, India. Ganguly's burst into this VB series with the ball, hasn't he? 2 for 32 to follow up. He's 3 for 55 in the last game and nipped away beautifully. Pitch, leg, hits, middle, and off. Evans quite entitled to try and play across the line of that one because it was pitched perfectly and did a little bit off the seam. It goes right now. Very, very good bowling from the part-timer. Two for 32. Now, there's no slip in for Gurk. We'll see that delivery again. He did play across it. He wasn't playing straight, but it was certainly a good delivery at this stage of the match. Now for a Gurkha, there's a bit of confusion about the fieldsman there at backward point. He's now coming to cover.
big ask this for Ajita Gurkha to come back into the attack too. He's been out with injury. This is his first match back from a calf strain. Or tear. He has got a very good up record against Australia. Down the leg side. Wide called. Every run's so important here. 29 or 24, but just four wickets in the shed now, Australia. Clark on nine. Missed first ball, a stumping chance. Swing and a miss. Well, not, not the ideal conditions either to bowl in. Coming back from a calf strain or tear. <laughs> Slippery, unsecure about your footing. 17 matches v Australia, 30 wickets. Brilliant record, 6 for 42. That was in the first match in this VB series at the MCG. A little expensive at times, especially against Australia, but his strike rate and striking ability, very good. Clark's gone for it. The man out of square leg, just a single. 28 off 22. And that brings Harvey on strike now. Will we put a slip in for Harvey? Ganguly. I think he will. He's been on the job tonight. So we have Ganguly. In comes the slip. It's a slip, point, cover, and a mid off for Ian Harvey. He's taken his time over every decision, that's for sure. I don't know whether they've played within the spirit of the, the game in that regard. But once again, he's taken the slip out now. He's put one in, now he's putting him out. And I think they want to be bowling to Harvey as often as they possibly can. Give Clark a single and then see if Harvey wants to win the match for Australia or attempt it anyway. Two men in the deep on the onside. He's caught in the deep at the Gabba, chipping off his pads. It's down a fine leg for a single. Not a bad delivery. It was at the stumps. 27 off 21. Important ball right now. Gurkha to Clark. Clark's a young, inexperienced man. Stroke maker. Gotta be doubled up in thought. Should I go for the big one? Should I work it into a gap? What's going to happen? Give himself some room. He's crunched it out to cover. And through for one. Harvey's quick. Good running and back for two. Great safe play by Michael Clark. He gave his stumps up. It was a good ball by Adjita Gurkha. And still found time to run two. 25 off 20. If the ball was correct too, it was just a fraction too full. He was aiming at leg stump, a little bit of a reverse swing. Well run. 24 of 19, leg by call. Following the legs of Michael Clark with the line of that. Clark will be thinking next time, okay, which way am I going to go? I've backed away once. He's followed me the second time. Maybe it's the leg side that I'll target. Whatever it is, he's got to be clear. Got to have a simple plan in mind. But it's Harvey on strike now. Almost a nick, over bowled, 6 for 24 runs, 18 deliveries to be bowled, the captain's going to bowl another over, be his seventh and final over, and it'll be Bilagi and the Gurkha to bowl out if Australia don't score the 24 runs.
He's bringing his third man, which is swapping over. One's going to deep point. The third man is now running about a 45 degree position. The crowd, they don't like this slowing down tactics. I think he's got him on the ropes, Ganguly. Playing at his own speed. Park's gone for it. Oh, well, chance for a run at Shawley for throws good. That's got to be out. Surely that's out. Yes, it is. It's got to be. It was always on. There was never two in that. Michael Clark at the pace. I'm not sure whether Harvey really wanted that single or the second. Did he commit on the turn? It doesn't matter. When we look at this, Ganguly picks it up well on the second bounce. Harvey's gone. He can keep going on the way to the pavilion. Michael Clark's put more pressure on those young shoulders as Ganguly claims the run out. Big wicket, it was always a dice. He turned, it was good field in the outfield too. It was a good throw, bounce throw, and there goes Harvey. He's gone. He's run out for one. And the crowd are roaring at the Sydney Cricket Ground. They're holding firm into in the field. And as you said, Ian, if they win this, it's going to be a big win. Charging pull shot on the up. Clark wants it. Does Harvey. Don't know whether he totally committed it. He never believed he could get there unless it was a bad throw. Adjita Gurkha produces a decent throw. Ganguly does the rest at the non-striker's end. 7 for 202. for 202 at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Clark on 13, Andy Bick of the new batsman. Andy Bick with a handy, good strike rate, a good average, but this has put up your hand time. The Indians holding firm. The time picking up two wickets in the one over Ponting and Martin. Again, has got two now in a run out. Andy Bickle's put his hand up plenty of times before, which suggests to me there's been a wobble or two in this Australian middle order for some time. How's he going to go tonight? That ball so important here. Ganguly in his final over. Twenty-three off sixteen. Three wickets in hand. Clark on strike. One good over now, they need, well, they need three good overs. 8.6 and over. Crowd totally enthralled. Look at the cricket, boys. In the air safely, or is it? Yes, it is, chipped in. Picks up two. We've got to take a head off to Ganguly. He's bowling straight, making the batsman play every delivery. 21 off 15. Swapping a fielder over there. There's a big hole at cover, which is going to be filled in a moment. But this cover field has got to be attractive to Michael Clark. There's three men in the ring protecting that. But the shot over the top might be the one. Through or over cover. Saw him coming. Is that four? It's gone. Before that's a big hit at this stage. I saw him coming with the charge, he gave him a full toss, he put it away. Almost a no ball as well. His first bad delivery, he sees Clark targeting the cover region. Big high full toss, well outside leg, well put away. Surprise delivery, coped with really well. And for mine, it was over the waist of Michael Clark 17 off 14. Cut, could be a single. Misfield, they get two. Gravaska under pressure, fumbles. Weaves, Clark on strike, 15 off 13. 
Ganguly's tied the big high full toss. Now the wide one outside off. Not that wide. Clark made it wide. Rowan Gavaskar had been replaced from third man to cover, especially to cut runs down out there. What does he do? Fumbles the first one he gets. Oh! That's a big hit. He could be out. He's under it. He's gone! What a wicket. The last ball from Ganguly. Clark holds out. 15 off 12. Two wickets in the hutch. What a match. This is the World Cup final. This is magnificent bowling by Ganguly. He's gone through the whole gambit of emotions in this over. He's tugged at his hair. He's had the hands on the head plenty of times. And now he's got hands outstretched. Great length. Sees Clark coming. Puts it on a good length. Clark has to play a brilliant shot and falls just short. Caught by Badani at long on. The latest emotion is joy. Not for Clark. Eight for 210. Australia under pressure once again as Brett Lee walks to the centre of this great stadium. And Gooley has only well, seven overs, has three for 41. This was a good catch in the outfield under the pressure. Adani standing firm, caught it easily. It's a good clean hit. The white ball carrying. Adani held his ground beautifully. He pitched it beautifully. Clark was double bluffing. He was looking to hit over the offside. Then he decides to charge. Ganguly found the length. If it was a touch fuller, Clark would have put it over mid off. But he hit a good length. Clark had to hit it on the up and tugged it across to long on rather than long off, where I'm pretty sure his mind was set. Fifteen off twelve, just two wickets. Gurkha, swing and a miss. Wide call. Whoa! I don't know what he's thinking. Whether well, it's a little bit of a re revenge for the summer, but why the bouncer and the big wide one first up? Get it at the pads. Get it at the stumps. You never know. He might have slipped. Who knows? Angela Gurkha. A bonus run, 14 from 12. That's better, dot ball. 14 off 11. We've sat through the rain, this crowd. We've seen some wonderful individual performances. Gilchrist, 95 off 72. Ponting, 42 off 54. Patan, 3 for 51. 14 off 11. Next man in, Jason Gillespie, if needed. Looks like it's a rib attack. Short ball into the body of Brett Lee. Can he step away and slog one to the leg? He's beaten. Well bowled, dot ball. Every ball is getting clapped now. The hands are on heads, every ball, for some part of the crowd. Good bowling, good follow-up by Gurkha. Lee looking for the, the shorter one into the hip and rib region. He didn't get it. He got one to fly it outside off. He now needs a very simple plan. Watch the ball and smash it. Oh, dot ball. That's beautifully bowled. Oh, the crowd. The Indian crowd. Are roaring. Lee, Bickle, the big chat, it's got to be throw the batter, put bat on ball. Hopefully pick it up early out of the hand. If it's going to be short, maybe get inside the line and flip it down fine legs way. Target maybe the, the mid-wicket fieldsman over there. A scamper through for single. Is it enough? They certainly need a, a boundary in this over. Two balls remaining, 13 off eight. Big shot's got to come, hasn't it? Generally, there's a man just here, and he'll go back after talking to the bowler. He'll go back there, 
So Andy Bickel is very good at hitting that way. There's a big gap out, out there where a boundary can be hit and it's quite easy, quite easy. And Andy Bickle's facing his first delivery. The batsman expecting the bowlers to do it. 13 off eight. They walk out in front of the full house under lights. Darkish ball. Score 13 off eight. A lot of experience played beautifully in the World Cup with the bat Andy Bickle. Under pressure. Just a single. 12 off seven. But the obvious boundary is that mid-wicket. There's not a lot otherwise. Fine leg is up. Maybe they could hit one over that way. Finesse one through third man. Fine leg. So that down, that's down this. That way, third man. Fine leg over that way. But not that easy. The obvious one is mid wicket to the right of screen. Nice ball. Gurkha. Single. 11 from 6 here at the Sydney Cricket Ground, 1 over to be bowled. That's the situation here at the Sydney Cook Ground. 11 of 6 is going to be the inform Balaji to take up the attack from the members' end. He's bowled very well throughout the BB series. Brett Lee's on strike. Now he's a good striker of the ball. Gungulli, a third man, a deep cover, a long off on the fence. Square leg on the fence and a long on. Just four men inside the circle, right on the line. They'll concede singles, but they don't want to concede boundaries. Two runs a ball. Right to the wire, this one. 11-13 is the time. That night in Sydney. And this game has gone all the way. The crowd are here. Those that are here, thoroughly enjoying it. Nothing easy. Struck to cover, dot ball, single. 10 off 5. It's as good as a dot ball. India don't mind giving up singles. Bickle or Lee have got to find a way to hit the ropes. Clear them would be nice. Over the keeper's head. Between your legs down to fine leg. Doesn't matter where they come from. Put bat on ball. Gone in the third man. One bounce, just a single. Nine off four. <laughs> the pressure's on everybody. What a pity it was a top edge. If that found the middle of the bat, it was going over cover. Strong man Andy Bickel. He can hit lofted shots with great power, like the one Andrew Simons hit into the cover crowd. Brett Lee's got to do it now, though. Bickel is non-striking. I bet we can hit a six. We've seen it before. He's a good, strong hitter when he gets hold of it. Down to deep cover for one. Going for two, and they're home. That's well run. Lovasco is a little bit tardy there on the fence. Both very quick men. Lee and Bickle made the most of that pace. A skewed drive. Low full toss by Balaji. Gavaskar very late seven from three getting a bit tight for both sides right now he's saying where do you want me but certainly he was a bit slow out of the box there young gavaskar seven from three Lee on strike it's gone for, it's gone it's four six and six can you believe that it's gone all the way well how about that over cover goes Brett Lee. Just a bit of width. He got hold of it. That's a great stroke under pressure. Woohoo! There's still work to be done. Bickle and Lee, conscious of the fact we're not there yet. 
He still sliced it. But look at that carry. That's what Andy Bickle was looking to do at the start of the over. Balaji puts it in the slot again. And Lee finds the middle. All the men coming up inside the circle now. Two balls remaining. What a time to hit a six. He's capable of doing it. Lee's done it before. Just had a bit of width. The man had been on the rope. He almost caught that too. It's between the fieldsmen of cover and long off. Will they scamper through for leg by? Will we try and bowl a Yorker? Oh, he fumbles. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear. What an end. This field could have been a run out. Bickle and Lee get them home. Well, I said Australia could use the last 10 overs as practice in case they're put in this situation in a bigger match. A match that meant more. India were all over them. Bevan, Clark, Harvey all got starts but got out. It was left to Lee and Bickle. This is the last ball. They had another one up their sleeve. Balaji doesn't put it in the slot that time, but the Yorker is one ball too late. Fumble in the cover field, and Lee's the man with arms outstretched. Ten minutes ago, it was Ganguly. The end of a tremendous match. Reduced to 34 overs. The target was 225. They lost eight minutes getting there. In the end, it was the bowlers. Bickle and Lee that got them home. Couldn't have tried any more the Indians. They slowed the game down. Frustratingly slow. The crowd gave it to them. That didn't perturb them. They kept it going. The young men were enthusiastic. They were skillful. But the Australian batting, in the end, climbs over them. The Australian crowd, which has been pretty quiet for the last half an hour, overrides the many Indians that are here in Sydney. They'll be disappointed, but they shouldn't be in India. It was a very good effort by their bowlers, Patan, Ganguly in particular, and Kartik picked up Gilchrist on 95, a return catch. Doesn't get much better than this. Two sides in good form. And that's the scorecard. One ball to spare. 33.5 overs, 8 for 225. Lee, 12 off 9 with one magnificent 6. Bickle not out 2. Indian bowlers. Ganguly got them back into the match. Three for 41 from seven. Agurka back into the one-day team. Not as impactful today as he has been. Patan three for 51. Parachuted in with a couple of late wickets. Six wides to go with that. Murali Kartik, quite impressive. The left arm orthodox. So the Australians are home. Even with a thunderstorm, the match was a beauty. Went right down to the wire. Well, that's the scene here at the Sydney Cricket Ground. It's, uh, well, it's a slightly overcast evening, but an absolutely packed house here to watch these two fabulous cricket teams. Now, the Australians have got their work cut out here because India have done very well. 296 is a good score at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Good score historically because no team has won batting second and scored more than 260. So that's